What's going on, everybody? Cali Death Podcast back once again, episode 63. I hope you guys are having a good week. Uh, thank you to all the the return listeners and subscribers, and thank you to everybody who's come to see us this week for the first time. Uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, all those buttons, the bells and whistles. Um, yeah, so this week, oh, resident homies, Casey, Joel, and Joseph, always with me. I'm Anthony. Um, again, going to plug them one more time. They had their launch this week, uh, Battle Forge Coffee. Please go check them out. Uh, battleforgecoffee.com it's our homies and deeds of flesh they have been working on this for the last year and they finally launched you can go uh get whole beans get grind five pound bags other accessories all that shit but yeah go help out the homies in uh, the underground death metal scene with their new company battleforge coffee shit's amazing dude i really fucking like it i, I already hit up mike and i'm like Dude, where's my where, where's another bag? But actually, where's I'm my, trying to get my first bag. Where, no, that's <laughs> <laughs> all right. You're calling out your death metal dad right now. But <laughs> I already got you guys on the list for the next samples. Out. I'm just kidding. You know? I know. I know. Okay. All right. Um, but yeah, here we are again. Always in your living room, in your ears, in your on your computer every single week, Friday. And this week we uh, are bringing a nice fucking killer slab of underground technical black death thrash melodic fucking craziness for you guys that if you guys don't know please after this episode do your research because you need to know what the fuck is up with this band we got ben and tyler from zoth seattle's based fucking craziness what's going on guys Woo. Hey, hey how's it going yo hell yeah yo. guys and, and, and you know it's um what we like to do with this show is you know, we like to talk to everybody, but another thing that we've always had in our little podcast meetings that we have outside of recording these things is like giving platforms to people who we know are fucking super talented. They're fucking grinding and they're getting their music out there like DIY independent style. And, and we really would love to give this a, as a platform t- to you guys and showcase like, people like you and, and and just get the stuff out there just like help push it just a little bit you know i mean you guys have been grinding enough to where it got into our radar and shit and fucking joel and joseph are being they've actually been see, seeing you live and shit so it's like joel tell us about that like how you got us into them and saw them and stuff actually it was joseph joseph actually texted me oh. at 6 p.m and was like hey you want to go see a sick death metal show tonight and i was like fuck come on not really but um, i have to go to work super early um and And, i was like i could be convinced is what I said. you were actually my backup i originally had a friend to go with and (laughs) he canceled on me so then i inadvertently (laughs) i had to invite joel who ended up getting super stoked on the live show that night and uh chase was there and uh ezra that was there would your first pick have been as stoked as joel you think uh, they would have been stoked, but not as stoked as Joel ended there up being. Go, it was pretty dude. much a, a best case scenario. Someone that's how the, randomly that's how the universe works, guys. gets turned on and gets he really like, into it. He so. was like sending us videos and, t- and to our chat and stuff, and just like check out this band I saw last night. They're like insane. Like yeah, we were watching, oh, just going like, what the fuck? Like this is insane. And then we heard you guys were going to be on, and so I was like blasting it like the last day or two, like especially yesterday last night with my friends and dude. We were just like, what the fuck? Like, this band is out of control, dude. So, I mean, it's it's crazy. Like, the respect. execution live, too. Like, I was that's the main thing. I was like, I haven't even really heard them on this yet. And it just came across perfect live. Like, the battle solos. I felt the fucking what's Tyler's. A, what's like, a disc? What's a disc? What are you talking about? Oh, it's a it's a it's like a square thing that you put into a lunchbox. <laughs> it's a square but, thing uh, a circle. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I remember like seeing. And actually, the, one of the funnier things, too, there's was, was like comedy behind it, too. Like Tyler's fucking introductions were, to songs were like, we're getting I was like listening to what he's saying. And I, just, I just start cracking up because he would just take it so far, like off like the, the fucking deep end with like the descriptions of something. And I'm just like, oh, my God. I was like, <laughs> this band's hilarious and shredding and fucking it, like all the things that I like. I don't know. So, yeah, no, I was super stoked. How was that tour? Was it good? That was Sick. excellent. Yeah. Definitely yeah. Our best tour ever. So was it did you guys put it together i mean you guys like we said earlier you guys are diy so like you guys had to do all the booking and everything for it yeah i booked i booked it with our drummer 
uh, Jeremy. We worked on that together for a couple months. Damn. No, it's definitely, it's probably one of the most I know exciting things I've seen. Just not knowing what I'm walking myself into, and and just like oh, I'm like, oh, this band has a cool logo. Let's check it out. Fuck it, I'm down. Like, you know, like well, I was, doing gonna, that whole thing. I was gonna bring that up too because that's that's kind of like a common thing we've talked about it many a times on the podcast. It's like. And it's mainly my question, but I love to ask this. It's like, what's a fucking sick band you've seen that you had no idea what they sounded like, no idea about them before you walk into a live setting, then you see them in the live setting for the first time and you fell in love. And this is one of those bands for Joel, not me because I wasn't yeah, there that cool. live, but I, I mean, I fell in love with you guys listening to your album, but Joel had it. Joseph didn't have this experience just that night. Just Joel had that experience that I, I, always ask people like what's that band and it's not there's been many a bands for people but i'm saying like to have one recently like this is a fucking cool experience to be able to recount it on the show now too yeah, speaking of the logo i love the logo and the whole octopus thing and the, your art and everything it's so sick <laughs> so ben we've we've hung out before right that's what you said at the bar we've partied or something before back in the day yeah we drank at a uh suffocation show i think it was on halloween at the okay. whiskey oh or, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah or it definitely. was outside the key club or something definitely yeah that was uh i remember all that night dude it was super <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be like really Lisa. it was it was very brief but what i remember is this one guy wouldn't leave me alone at the end of the night and he ended up punching me in the neck screaming white power mm. That was me. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. No, no, no. Was, yeah, no, dude. Uh, I'm just kidding. I'm all. This wouldn't, wouldn't leave you alone. Like, that doesn't like me. <laughs> that was so, weird. This is what I did right after we met, dude. <laughs> yeah. Damn. That's uh. Me, me and Tyler and I are like, dude, don't don't point the. <laughs> I know. I'm just bald. I, got, I swear. I got two baldies <laughs> next to each other on my screen. <laughs> me too. <laughs> just looks like uh, oh, two okay. Q-tips. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, fuck yeah, guys. Well, um, so how we usually do this is, I mean, with, with two different guys, it's kind of hard to know you guys got, I'm actually putting it in your court to figure it out, but whoever wants to start it off, start it off. Um, we'd like to take, we like to go back as far as you possibly can take us, take us to childhood when, you know, um, you're, you're bumping, your parents are listening to music and all of a sudden something clicks with you and it's like, let's pay attention to music and started, you know, that snowball. Hmm. <laughs> all right. Then I'm going to go for it. Ben, you go since you were first on. Well, I mean, I remember listening to things, but nothing I totally fell in love with. Maybe weird. Oh, weird Al. Yeah. Uh, nice, fat. dude. You know, the you know what's funny is I, I'm, I'm listening to a podcast, Comedy Death Ray, or Comedy Bang Bang. He's a frequent guest on that shit, but I've been listening to him literally today, so it's funny that you said Weird that. Weird Al? He's yep. so good, dude. And that's that's kind of how I learned to memorize phrases and music, is just kind of memori memorizing his total songs and singing harmonies and things like that. I mean, I learned a, a bunch of stuff from him. But yeah, I remember watching that music video for Fat. I remember waking up early and seeing MTV when I was a kid and that music video was on and it's just really, I don't know. I was stoked. Yeah, for sure, dude. So, and w one part of those, one part of that, that starter question that I left out this time is like when you got into your instrument as well, like, or if, if the instrument that you're playing now, isn't your first instrument, like when did wanting to play music happen? And I'm not saying that you're not starting properly. I'm just, realizing that i left that part out because you guys are both you play strings and stuff like that so it's like i want to know when all those like key points happen so weird owls on mtv which is a big thing for our generation dude like mtv while you're eating your cereal before you're going to school was like my shit you know and after too but i'm just saying like always getting hooked up with music through those morning mtv music videos while I'm shoveling Lucky Charms in my fucking mouth. <laughs> yeah, definitely had an influence. But I started playing music when I was uh, a little kid. I think, s I don't know how old you are in first grade. I was uh, six, six, or seven. six or yeah. seven. My mom wanted me to play clarinet. And at the time, you know, growing up, I thought it was pretty lame. But 
I'm pretty glad she did because I learned how to play music really well. And uh, then my parents got me a bass guitar when I was 12. I don't know why I wanted to play bass, but uh, that's it. And I played uh, Ozzy Osbourne licks a lot when I was a kid. And it just oh, yeah. grew from there. More extreme and more extreme and more extreme. Any older siblings or parents that were musical during that time, too, that kind of gave you a an influence shout, shout out to my mom she was a singer boom so there it she is wanted, she wanted us to be musical and uh my brother and my sister both played but they never stuck with it so i feel like if you just stick with it you're good totally, totally. Dude. especially That's at that it. age too like starting music like that early i've noticed a lot of people that start around like you know six seven something like that when they're like still developing like language skills and stuff like that and they're like incorporate music into their language kind of learning like the malleable brains kind of like kind of making that kind of it seems like it it jumps really quickly like you really get a grasp of it you just kind of understand it really quickly you know i feel like that's the move to do if you want to get you your kid speak music. it yeah yeah mm -hmm. exactly i was just gonna say you learn it just no different than learning a language yeah and and uh it, it really is like casey's an, an example joseph when did you start playing yeah, like six or seven. Yeah, like oh, these damn. guys are the fucking the alien geniuses that I know, and everybody started at that age, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Alien dingus. <laughs> alien dingus. <laughs> if you start and keep going, like even this is my thing too, dude. Is like I started playing piano at six, but I quit at like eight. You know, I was like, "Fuck this," you know, and now. 37 i'm looking back like what the fuck could i have been if i just had my mom just gave it was a little more tough on me and said no stick with it and get over that hump there's that hump for all, all starting anything new you know whether it be a fucking diet or some some new hobby or whatever you got to get over this hump and then once you're in the hump then you then it starts to become something that's like just flowing and you you get better and better at it yeah, I don't know, man. It's just some people take to it. I, I didn't even like music. I was just kind of good at it. It was weird. I didn't listen to it anywhere outside of my lesson. It was just something I did because my parents took me to lesson and I got positive reinforcement. It wasn't like I, I probably would have quit if I didn't have a teacher and a person taking me to the lesson. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I feel like you're just good. at You're just an amazing hey, learner. Yeah, that's crazy. like you're like. Just you're scholastically amazing. Also, too, like you're amazingly talented. Oh, yeah. too. Well, that's but, like, also that's a that's, good skill to have, though. I'm just saying. That's also a, um, an example of you don't have to have the passion for something necessarily to to if once you do the work, you'll develop the passion because yeah, Joseph, once I got Joseph's into, got the fucking passion, dude. You I know? had I could yeah, yeah. leverage all the stuff where I didn't care that much. I'm like, well, now this is gonna pay the fuck off. So yeah, <laughs> yeah totally, dude. And that's awesome. Yeah. So well, then, so you're, you're, so when did you get your first instrument? Yeah, like six or seven with the clarinet. That was it. Okay. Yeah, that was it. And uh, yeah. I, I never practiced, but uh, I just lied. I said I did. <laughs> <laughs> I fooled everyone, you know? <laughs> it's easy with a quiet instrument to pretend like you practice and get away with it. That was just good, man. <laughs> damn oh yeah i was just Hell good yeah. baby <laughs> <laughs> What's up? Here you go. when did you get into like rock and metal and or i guess you said you were playing aussie licks on your bass yeah when did you start yeah, your so first who band? fed you the aussie i think there was a music video or something i was just so, down down with dark things and you know video games and all the all the good stuff it just mm -hmm. it was just a natural thing to go down that road so you would say MTV would be more so the main place or did well, you have an older friend, a friend that had an older brother or some shit like that? I, uh, I, I spent my childhood raised in England and we had a uh, Kerrang. Mm -hmm. so mm. they, oh so yeah. Yeah. It was a little more extreme. It was like, that's just something me and my brother watched. We thought it was cool. You know, was there like a scene out in like England? Like as far as like go see shows, when, when did you move? From England to I here, was, um, twelve to the United States. Okay, so when you so, said you got your first bass when you were twelve, right? So you yeah. came back here and got your first bass, yep. and then you started actually like jamming and and getting like into actually playing 
possibly with the band in the future? Uh, more or less. I was kind of distraught a little because, uh, you know, a lot of I tried playing at school and I didn't know how to read music. And, you know, it was kind of a weird transition period for me as a kid. It was a uh, it was kind of tough, but eventually it just I don't know, a year or two into living in the United States, I kind of just got into extreme music and started listening to Slayer. And uh, nice. Slipknot and, you know, were you born in England? No. Oh, okay. I was born in the United States, but we moved there when I was a little kid. So, what a trippy fucking upbringing, though. Start in the United States, go to England, and come back. Yeah, it's gotta we, be like... we moved around like crazy. My dad was uh, just a risk taker, you know. He's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we moved around. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, your bass playing live definitely stood out and I remarked on it after the show. I was like, how the fuck can your thumb withstand yeah, the picking all that fucking crazy picking you do? And then you showed me your thumb and it was like callous to shit. And I'm like, Oh, that makes sense. Like, yeah, still is. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that was, that was impressive, man. Like you're Thank a crazy you. bass player. Yeah. You're actually, I was sitting there, I actually was filming it and sending it to, uh, Trevor, this, uh, roommate, one of my best friends. Just like he's a great bass player, too. And I was like, what the fuck is this guy doing? <laughs> I think I sent like that because I was like, you were just going insane. And I was like, I don't see bass players going that insane in that style of music very often. I can't even think. I can't think of one, actually. I mean, there's like the origin bass player who does some like crazy techniques like that where, you know, he's it's sick. like, yeah, you see like techniques that he does. and You're like, whoa, what's that? I've never seen that. You know, it's kind of like you had that kind of stand out to me. I was like. What the fuck is this? you know? I, I know I knew what you were doing with your thumb and stuff, but you were doing a bunch of slapping. You were doing all kinds of shit. You were all over the place with it, and I was like, "This guy's a fucking, this fucking alien band coming into Santa Cruz and fucking invading <laughs> assholes, <laughs> making us feel like shit." Alien dinguses. <laughs> <laughs> every in. time, every time you uh, you were front and center on the album too, I'm on that interdimensional album because I haven't heard the the ones before that, but. Because actually, to be honest, once I started listening to that one, I kept wanting to listen to that one. So I will go further back after this episode, no doubt. But that out that just I wanted to focus on just that one. And every time the the bass came out and it was front and center, I was like, yes, dude, because it gave me like a little bit of like an avant garde, almost like like just weird, like what the weirdos in Norway were doing with black metal. They're they bringing the bass used to not be in black metal at all. And then all of a sudden you got Dode Heems guard or however you fucking say that. And then they're making bass present. And then I hear it in, I, I definitely hear an influence from that band. I don't know if that's uh, on your guys's radar, but I definitely hear like parts in your bands that sound like certain bands from Norway that were like the, the second wave of the second wave that t- wanted to make it all weird, you know, just like hints of that in the, in the base when it comes out and it's present on those parts, you know what I'm talking about? Um, it always takes me back to like more of an avant-garde field. I don't know if, if I'm touching on the, I right think the reason why yeah. you probably think it's avant-garde is because so many fucking recording engineers and producers fucking bury it. Like you can't hear like no, a lot of no, the, you know I, what I mean. Believe me, I know avant garde, dude. I'm not talking about. Well, I know, no. Also, how too, that's why I said with Ben, like, is. like the the slap shit that Ben's doing and stuff with the, like a thrashy style. He's doing like a slap thing, and that's like yeah. But there's parts where I'm talking. Ben comes out where it's he steps out in front of everything else on that song in that moment, and he does his thing, and I'm like, this is like what something like you would hear in an unexpected song or a fucking, yeah. you know, totally. some, something different like that. Like it, he just steps out and makes it, in that little, that little chunk of time on the song. He's like, fuck yeah, dudes, this is me right here. <laughs> and then I'm going to, all right, I'm back in the, I'm back in the base. He's just slapping again, his but... alien dingus against the string. Boom, boom, boom. The alien dinguses are in a spaceship, but they don't know how to drive. They just crash into like meteors and stuff. <laughs> See, this is what this is like. What I right, right now is perfect. The alien dingus thing is perfect with like your guys's banter in between and shit. Like yeah. you guys would say shit that I would just be like, you guys would get me going. And I would just like, get lost for a second, then come back and like you guys would say the most obscure shit like to announce your songs, and I'd be like, holy fuck, dude! Like <laughs> this, cr- it's it's so fucking funny and fucking 
well thought out. Now, are you okay? Real quick, Tyler, are you making that shit up on the fly? A uh, good portion of it, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I'll be like, maybe I'll bring this into it, but I just try to uh, let go. And yeah, yeah, that's like a the dark part of my personality. Um, I'm kind of shy. And I don't like talk too much, so that's just all the stuff I want to blurt out on the street corner that would usually send me to jail <laughs> or something. So. <laughs> oh man that's fucking awesome no that's rad dude i definitely get the uh avant-garde alien vibe from you is that your your core your, your core dude okay avant-garde <laughs> alien dingus vibe <laughs> oh. well oh yeah there's kind of a fan question that ties in to this so yeah, maybe it's worth bringing it. up that's good yeah so zarma coops says it's gonna sound weird but one of the reasons why zoth is my favorite tech band is the humor in the themes of the music. But sometimes I can't help but think, is it intentional? Are you guys aware of how ridiculous Invasion of the Tentacube sounds for an album name? And then whether you are or not, keep going, alien emoji. <laughs> but yeah, so what's... I, I I guess the question is, like, how intentional is the humor? Or how... Yeah, it's I guess like, that's the question. I'd say it's like, it's can be like tongue-in-cheek. Um Yes, Invasion of the Tentacube is like really ridiculous. And we're like, I think people will like read that and be like, oh, I got to hear this. Um, maybe not my favorite album title in hindsight, but you know, <laughs> uh, I, that album definitely has more tongue in cheek aspects. Um, I think like a lot of our lyrics are like pretty serious, um, but I like to poke fun at those serious things just because everything is horrifying and it feels good to laugh about it sometimes. <laughs> That's awesome. That's kind yeah. of like a, how a comedian thinks kind of, it's like they're mm-hmm. down to get, yeah. to make fun of their shit, but they're down to like be serious a little bit. And like, yeah. Yeah. Cause we're not like joke metal or anything like that. Um, but yeah, it's like, it is very serious, but um, I like your comedians. Uh, bill hicks george carlin uh okay yeah. you know all those guys and it would get deep but you could yeah, laugh about it so yeah they bring you out of the hole they, they take you down a deep hole and they, like fucking make you think and then they bring you out and make you laugh mm-hmm. kind of thing. i think yeah, people yeah. will listen more you know definitely when you, uh, when you make them laugh so definitely that's very true yeah very I, true. I think that's a good kind of approach like you know it's aliens and tech death metal like there's been a few bands to do it and there's like bands that deeds of flesh try to do it like completely serious on the last few albums and then like that's kind of been done and then there's like the conspiracy side of things and that's kind of its own thing and then you guys have like a fun fresh kind of take on it which is like again just kind of refreshing after seeing like well i mean in reality dude we all as metal has got to a point where the imagery and the you know subject matter of certain bands that we listen to just became like ah come on this is really (laughs) like like, i i'm sorry i just laugh all the time when i read cannibal corpse lyrics i was just thinking that you know it's just like it's, it's a joke when i read along to that and it's like because none of uh, I've met so many of us that I'm like none of us are like that, you know. That's <laughs> yeah. what's, it's so funny that like none of us are like that. Yet this is what we choose to express through, you know, used to express. But I mean, I actually, you know, denounce the gore lyrics and all that shit. Like when I could, like if if it's my 100% deal, I'm not going to be a fucking gore writer, dude. If somebody's giving me, you know, if I'm doing something for somebody and they're telling me this is what I need to write about, then I'll, I I can still go into those realms or whatever, but really it's like, it's all fucking comedy to me when I get in, when I read the (laughs) gore lyrics, people are still like serious, like a band starting today that is like serious about gore. That is the most hilarious shit (laughs) I could fucking think of right now, dude. Like really think of the guys, the guys that are like, we're going to be the next cannibal corpse, dude. And like fucking 
strip raped and strangled like nah dude we're gonna fucking I, you know i don't it's been done <laughs> yeah it's, it's like yeah. it's, it's, it's not it's not shocking anymore and, and like none of us do funny. it so it's all funny we're all fucking nerds that's what it, it is. reminds me of you and severed savior when you had to do like old songs that were about like taking i was kind of time. A, that's what was in my mind when i was just saying what i was saying like it was all, yeah, all yeah. old songs like yeah, i know I, me, we were. I was laughing so hard doing fecal filiac. I've already told that story <laughs> many times. You're laughing Sick so fucking song. hard in the studio. I don't get what's and, so funny. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, and I'm just like, I, poops, can't, yeah. I, I was literally telling myself like, I can't believe I'm about to say this line, you know, and then I say it. <laughs> but what Dude, about I, Anchorman? I listened to that song at the zoo. <laughs> yeah, but that was but nice. that was like <laughs> it was it was sick. Wait a minute. Right? Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. What? what at the zoo? increments of death yeah, San, at san diego zoo no no like, hold yeah, on a second iPod. Anthony. that was hilarious wait you listened to the fecal filiac at the zoo yeah when i was like uh 16 That's perfect were you near the elephant so you could actually smell the shit <laughs> while you're <laughs> listening to the shit i don't remember I, yeah, I was just like Put the tail ah, wagging around I be my like, <laughs> it's like 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 the windmill is the like the hair oh, the, the tail while they're like shitting you know like that video yeah, dude, dude. sick sick song Thanks. Yeah, dude. no, I, mean, it's I think not, it's like nothing to do with it. It's also like if you don't like <laughs> listen, like go yeah. a deep dive into the lyrics and stuff. It's like it's, this is like one of the sickest death metal songs ever. A, and then like then you read the lyrics yeah. and you're like, it's all it's all be, what's his, uh, something yeah. because you ate my poo. Uh, uh, I forget, it's like you all will like die, you, <laughs> will, you will die and so will you because you ate my poo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't so think like, supposed to eat not only that, so. like, yo, that's real life. That's real life. Walk the streets of poo. Dusty, yeah. as dusty saying i've lethal poo dude like don't get near it dude it's gonna fucking kill you worms <laughs> why oh, why you yeah. will die and so will you oh what, i've what? asked that i actually asked i think he's, asked oh because that's actually a, that's a live that's a live thing that went into a recording it's like oh my god that, that's like it was written into the song so he could point at people in the crowd uh <laughs> I think it's that about time that we've had a poop talk. It's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, actually, no. you know, so I'm not like, above that. One more thing. <laughs> no, on that. Definitely not. No, that song is so fucking sick. It really is sick, dude. And being like in the crowd when the the pounds going off. That's the song I jammed with Mike like. Gilbert. Like the only one I knew or barely knew. I don't only knew like half of it or something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Dan, that's the one you go to. You're like, all right, what do you want to jam? Uh, Dan learned that riff and he. Yeah. I mean, that riff is like for anybody who learns it, it's like they feel fucking sick after they know it, you know, if we're talking it, then Joel Guernsey just put a cover out. That's super fucking cool. So, yeah, I tagged that video, isn't it? Yeah, he did it on yeah. a an is eight that string. the seven string one. Eight, eight string. string. Yeah. Oh, shit. It's fucking Listen hard. That's, it's the ultimate man. for the guitar players out there. It's the ultimate like alternate picking fucking exercise. It's like. This constant like, but it's very you have to keep it very stable. It's like you have to keep your like you're picking very fucking in the pocket, or else it gets weird. So it's like that just shows the Mike Gilbert, like the fucking how insane that guy is. I wonder if there's accurate tabs that you can still find. There is. I have. I mean, Mike sent me all the tabs because I was like, one time I was like learning guitar. Yeah, that's you, dude. I'm saying the internet. Well, put them on the internet. Fuck Mike. (laughs) They're out there anyway. No, not fucking literally. (laughs) Um. Maybe Moving we should. Forward. Yeah, I want to. I want to hear about Tyler getting into music, into metal, and then how you guys started Zoth down the road. Okay, uh, so like the earliest music I can remember hearing. Yeah, just like, I mean that's kind of like the starting point, but like really, it's like when things started bubbling, and then you're like, you decide you want to start playing guitar, all that kind of shit. Like what, whatever you can find in detail in that memory bank for us. Okay. Uh, earliest and thing that probably like most subconsciously like influenced me is like video game music. Um, having like nice. a Sega Game Gear when I was like a r- little kid and fuck yeah, all those cool songs and I'll go back and re-listen and I'll remember ones from you know. When I'm I was, hearing like, Sonic in my head right now, dude. Yeah, I right, Castlevania. Um, yeah. And then uh, my parents were all never like huge music. They listened to like Rod Stewart and. Paul Simon and Spyro Gyro and stuff like that. Uh, and when I started really getting into music, uh, well, first, yeah, like Ben mentioned, Weird Al. My sister had Weird Al tapes. I really liked those. Oh, yeah. Um, when it was like me, I found this. It was like coming home from school and putting on MTV and watching Total Request Live. And it was like bands like The Offspring and 
uh, Static X, Limp Bizkit, you know, yeah, yeah. metal, like mainstream punk, uh, pop punk, whatever, Blink-182. And that's when I started, like, this is me. And it started, like, becoming my identity. Um, and I was, like, into that stuff. Totally. And then, uh, what, year, what year were you born? 1988. Oh, okay. So, so it was probably, like, 98 when I started getting to that. I went to my first concert when I was uh, just after I turned 11. That was Static X at Skate World in Boise, Idaho. Still the most nice. boobs I've ever seen at a show. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a little kid, first time in person. Uh, and then I got my first guitar. It was the uh, like first week or two of summer after I finished the fifth grade. Um, I asked my mom for a guitar. And we went to the store and got one. I took lessons for like a couple months and then that teacher, he like uh, went off to go to Berkeley school of music in Boston. And over the next year, I kind of just like dinked around sort of started giving up. Um, and then my mom was actually the one like a year later. I was like, Hey, I talked to our neighbor and they know this guitar teacher, Dave, and I think you should t- start taking lessons again. She really pushed me to start doing it. And I really connected with that guy and he showed me, uh like cool like more badass punk music no effects um bad religion stuff like that who teach me those songs and he showed me iron maiden who i thought i thought all metal was like new metal at that point or hair metal and i was like iron maiden aren't they like a hair metal cheesy he's like no 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 and he showed me the trooper and it was like the coolest thing i've ever heard and i was like i just want to shred like that from now on so Oh yeah, righteous. I was gonna say Maiden's definitely in there when I listen to you guys too. But mm-hmm. continue. And then it just like spiraled. I was more into like punk music going into Warp Tour. The only metal bands I really listened to were Iron Maiden, and um, I really liked Guar because I uh, heard about them from the Sega Genesis Beavis and Butthead game. <laughs> Not, like totally revolved around Guar, which <laughs> is <It was> cool. <laughs> um. But yeah, I was more into punk still. And then when I was in the ninth grade, we hosted, a, like my family hosted an exchange student from Chile. Uh, his name was Reiner. Cool guy. Still talk to him. Um, and he's like, do you like heavy metal? I'm like, yeah, Iron Maiden. He's like, well, check this out. He showed me uh, Children of Boda, Rhapsody, uh, oh, Demon War Gear, Sonata Artica. He like loves power metal. And that just like blew my mind. And from then on, I was just like, I, I loved it. And he that he was the guy that really showed me that there was like a big world of metal I didn't know about. Definitely. I clean I, like- I, I literally helped my kids clean their room to Rhapsody. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> my oldest Good. loves fucking Rhapsody, dude. It just becomes, I mean, it ends, it ends up becoming to where I'm like trying to fight, keep them from fighting each other because it just brings up like the, the fucking <laughs> battle fucking they're battle forged to do yeah. They're battle- <laughs> yeah they had too much battle forged coffee when they drink rap yeah. i think iron maiden is like the ultimate crossroad band for like metal like they're like the simpsons of metal you know it's like yeah. everybody <laughs> likes the simpsons like yeah they're just yeah. You know, and it's like i don't know it's cool it's like everyone from any genre can just kind of be like yeah i just like iron maiden and it's like okay we get it you know kind of it's like mm-hmm. it's rad yeah, yeah. it's like well, it's, it's the, the, they're such a universal band that just kind of like with but metal, they're awful you know. unique in really they were like yeah. pioneers in certain styles of like shred dude you know like a lot oh, of, of course shred goes way back i mean there were this. bands doing the same stuff like then lizzie and other bands like the scorpions and like other you know all that kind of stuff but like they were all i mean and then and judas priest like yeah yeah you know, whatever but like it was that whole time like everyone was like doing such great stuff but i just love how it always comes down to iron maiden like you know <laughs> Yeah, and metallic and other bands, but yeah, yeah, you know. The first time I got serious about practice was um when I started learning Iron Maiden songs. Yeah, no, and definitely. That, and, and that was like when I said I'm gonna learn the whole song. You know, oh, okay. When you're that yeah. when you're that age. Or what yeah, it's so like I'm gonna complete a song. Yeah, hundred percent it. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent it. <laughs> yep. So yeah. you know, no, definitely they're, they're okay, yeah. but hey. <laughs> Results. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, for sure. Totally. <laughs> Fucking resulting. Yeah. Um, no, I, I, results. 
no, back to sure. Tyler though. He was so, really so interested in your guys' influences of influences yeah. though, because man, I hear stuff in your music and dude, just to like interject real fast is like some of your solo sections, like and I love all of the shit, but like something about get, really good guitar solos or something kind of magical there, you know? And like there's some parts I'm just dude, like you guys are doing stuff that like just yeah, it's really cool. Out of this world, like outer space shit. Like it's fucking really melodic and like badass and unique and dude, it's people need to hear this shit. <laughs> it's super <Thank you>. good. <laughs> sure. Need to say that. Sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, okay, more my history then. Um uh, so yeah, I was around that time. 15 years old i started like getting good at learning songs by ear um and i would put on iron maiden i would learn all the leads never the solos never but i would learn the leads the riffs and i would learn like whole albums on guitar and bass and just like sit in my room and, like pretend i was in the band um then i was had been forming bands with my friends lots of failed uh like new metal and punk bands when we were little kids and then we discovered around that same time, ninth grade, uh, we discovered anal cunts and we're like, you don't actually have to like write music to like be in a band. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we like put on a tape recorder. We recorded just like some stupid improv, improv grind core and uh, threw it up on MySpace, and we called it uh, the band feasting on the elderly. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then I got a message a couple months later from this dude, uh, Justin Cantrell, who uh, runs a venue in Boise now called The Shredder. And he's like, do you guys want to play a, a show open for this band, Magruder Grind, from the East Coast? I'm like, uh, shit, shit. okay. <laughs> Didn't have any <laughs> yeah. songs or anything. Just like, yeah, let's do it. Uh, <laughs> uh, we got a ride from our friend's dad and set up in the alley of this place at the time, which was a a warehouse for the Idaho pizza company, which he now owns and is a venue called the shredder. This was like way back in the day for that. Uh, so we played a set of songs. I just wrote the titles for, and I, we just made them all up on the spot and <laughs> improvised and screamed and stuff. And people were moshing and I was like, this is cool. And I was from then on, I wanted to do a uh, live music. And so band practice was this, you guys showing up and just freestyling, just yeah, improvising just the whole time. Yeah, just just it's like noise. getting each other's like vibe down, and being like, all right, so yeah, this, you know, we're comfortable. Let's just go do this in front of people now. Yep. It's just like, Damn. <laughs> yeah. Not worried about being embarrassed or anything. Uh, totally. So <laughs> with a project like that, you you have to hit that moment where both of you are on the same wavelength at least once to continue pursuing that freestyle mm -hmm. jams because i mean there's plenty of hip-hop artists that can just freestyle words but like as a like multiple humans freestyling one thing you know improv jamming that always fascinates me dude and i always love to find those little like gems of like where you see in that moment the the multiple individuals that were making that thing actually hit the same uh, parallel situation where it's like it works and it works really it, it's it's like just blossom blossoming creativity anthony have you heard of insanathrac 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 or insanathrash no. i don't even know it's improv death metal i'll show you later it's okay uh, yeah i'm down dude yeah it's on that wavelength because I've, I've done enough jamming to where like I've it's impressive watched drummers and guitar players jam to where they hit these these little pockets where things dude, are like down dude Yo, yeah we're, we're, we're so down with the this same death metal dude it's like with jazz it's like they, they should just like like okay that'd be super funny if like okay so like like joel you kind of said this before like on an episode like like you know if cannibal or if a uh, fucked with a knife became like a jazz standard like you know oh yeah it's the old standard like what if you had like these like little standards and then like you like played the song you like did like a riff of like you know 
like lunatic of god's creation like deicide and then like you do this like you kind of jam on it and then there's like, these like solo sections like improv like jazz <laughs> like that comes yeah. back to the head and that's like the head Dude, it's like, uh, i think we're on to something here guys yeah. i'm down don't fucking steal our ideas <laughs> right? you people. know what i'm saying we're gonna you know make death metal yeah. standards dude i know that i mean that's <laughs> you know we're gonna reharmonize and, 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 deicide <laughs> alternate <laughs> alternate yeah. universe you know there yeah. could have been like a fucking another planet that had fucking death metal was the first thing it was like the first style of music was death metal and it started and it started in new orleans (laughs) (laughs) fuck yeah Yeah. cavemen probably made death metal yeah yeah Yeah, oh they probably had cavemen actually uh, probably the first like growlers and stuff was probably yeah. like yeah. Was pretty you know, the metal, first slamming dude. like yeah. you know you don't know there might have been one time these two cavemen got together and like one guy's like smacking a rock against the fucking wall and then one guy's like and, like could have, could, have, could have sounded sick dude, for a second yeah. <laughs> like those old Nile songs with like the <laughs> the, the drums and like you know the whole, uh, <laughs> yeah exactly the tribal hey, Ooga Booga, you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah fuck yeah dude, that shit's so uh fuck yeah. yeah no that's awesome so yeah going out in there and just playing fucking freestyle songs how was it successful how did the show go like people like were moshing and really into it and like wow this is cool and then that kind of put into my head like i don't really have to like write music and <laughs> damn <laughs> kept doing shows and it was like fun for a while then um i just like some drummer quit i tried it with other people and it's never like clicked the same yeah and then I tried to start like a black metal band and we did a couple shows in that. And I was like, mom, dad, I'm dropping out of high school and I'm moving to Milwaukee with my band. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, I've seen your, uh, I know, I've, I've seen your black metal band. It's called the uh, emperor, right? He's on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, no. Sorry. So that turned into me just like getting in like a lot of trouble uh, with yeah. my family and outside of school. And I actually got sent to like a, kind of personal but it ties in with the music i got sent to like a program for like troubled youth and stuff and mm-hmm. like the middle of the woods in colorado uh but the the owner of that place or director or whatever he was like a really cool guy and he like pushed me to take it really seriously and like when you know you turn 18 you should go to music school and um he kind of like pushed me towards that and so i ended up pursuing that uh, when i was set free from that place and uh went to musicians institute oh nice in los angeles oh yeah yeah nice. that's kind of when i really dove in and learned you know theory and everything that goes into it that i had ignored previously so definitely cool. yeah mm-hmm. that, yeah that's definitely I mean, it was uh, i remember we had um i forget what band it was but logistic slaughter one of the, the bass player got you know went to uh, berkeley school of music mm-hmm. being a metalhead or something like that or being into whatever like freestyle grind core whatever the, whatever the fuck you're doing and then going to like an, a scholastic environment of music was it kind of like kind of shit upon or did people were like accepted or what was going on no they were like really cool shred metal teachers and a lot of people i had you know common interests with uh, nice by that time i was really into yeah like more melodic metal and stuff like that i'd say think- like I definitely dove into that and there's a lot of stuff I might have missed out on. Like I should have done more of the different genres there. I did do that, but um kind of like stuck to the shred teachers for the most part. And and yeah, MI is like the most like rock metal of like the okay the mm-hmm. music schools, I think. Berkeley is a little more on the jazz classical, and then other schools like Juilliard are like way more, way, yeah. way more classical jazz. So yeah. Okay, that makes sense. So Berkeley, yeah. it seems like if it's in LA versus like, I don't know. I mean, Massachusetts, you know, I'm not saying is like a some strict little place, but it seems like LA is more like where you want to go to if you want to be a rock star or something like that. Like, I want to be a rock star. I'm going to send, I'm going to go to this school and, and be like Motley Crue. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, there's, uh, like that, you know. <laughs> there's a lot of kids there that only made it for like a couple quarters or semesters that would, you know, perm their hair up and wear all yeah. the chains like oh, yes i am in bay and that's just how, funny, that's like how watching college makes their money <laughs> yeah for yep. sure yeah for profit for sure. berkeley school are the woody the other guitar players off he went he went to berkeley mm. damn i could tell yeah. yeah watching you guys play i was like what the fuck you guys are like fucking educated <laughs> 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 tell, like, like yeah no and, and i love the uh, the way also too uh 
it's kind of a random off subject. So the way you use your whammy bars, you do the flutters, you do all like the constant like um you know vibrato with the whammy bar in unison with each other and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And like that really brings a that's probably a, that's a huge part of your guys' sound to me. It's like that's when you guys of- get into the melodic kind of like whammy kind of like it kind of brings you kind of like gets you kind of like marty friedman like ooh, like, you know what that, I mean? like, like max from anomalous kind of vibe too like like all totally stuff. like i don't know like that or even the phil from like, uh phil from uh first yeah. fragment that uh joseph said that oh yeah they, they phil, yeah told, or, or, he was talking about zoth right yeah he found you guys and was hyping you up yeah Dick. yeah, yeah i love yeah. uh i love the tremolo it's odd for, like forever i didn't I had all fixed bridge guitars. And I was like, no, oh, if I get a Floyd, it's, and I always have to use a Floyd and it's, the string's going to break and it's going to be such a pain in the ass and kind of like the stuff people tell you about Floyds. And, but yeah. I really loved Sean Lane, especially. Oh, fuck and yeah. just like the way he would use the you know tremolo bar. And I was just kind of like, always wanted one. And I also really love Michael Romeo from Symphony X. Oh, and he me does too. a lot of that. Uh, so one day, this was already after a couple of years deep into Zoth. I was okay. I'm gonna get a Jackson. I'm gonna buy a real, you know, German Floyd. Put it in there. Get it just done, super ripe. So it's super sick. And honestly, like from the first time it was like set up, like I already was doing the dips, and it was like connected, and it just became like an extension of me and like a, an essential part to my sound. And I started finally being like happy with how my solos and leads sounded especially just being able to uh dip and vibrato downwards and just get that other kind of di- you know the di- direction of sound that you can't do uh, without it yeah nice. that's awesome i mean that's a uh, i went i went the dumb route so my i mean in all due respect went the dumb route i went like the uh because i have like a, a few floyd guitars by me but um I went the just wanted to do the dime bag fucking squeal. That's all I yeah. Like the whole time, I just want to go. Woo! Like that's all I want. Like I do it like after like even just jamming with my my friends and stuff, just fucking around. I just want to at the very end of a song, I just want to do a little squeal. So that's all I want to do. That's, I that's fun too. <laughs> you just want to do the outro to Cemetery Gates, dude. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Hell yeah. The best is when you miss it too. It's just a <laughs> <laughs> St- still happens to all of us oh totally no those are they're, they're, you know any kind of harmonic or any kind of like move like that you know there's a risk you're taking it's a risk reward and you have to just get good yeah. enough where it's like not that big of a risk you know yeah. it's like i'm gonna just chill around oh, yeah. the seventh fifth and the 12th yeah. i'm not gonna do the third no, the middle you, third one if you miss it on the beat there's no squeal you got to do it again off beat and just pretend like nothing happened like it was yeah. on purpose like <laughs> uh, go bam. Cool. yeah, yeah. Like dump it exactly. <laughs> yeah exactly that's awesome did uh bars. did uh <laughs> did Eddie Van Halen play a big role in the Whammy Bar development? What I feel it, I thought he did, but I, I don't know if he did. I think it was more. He I mean, just popularized was it, it. I mean, it was Steve Vai. Steve Vai. I don't know. Like, well, I think, I think Van Halen did. Yeah, I think okay, he did. Okay. Like, I, I think that... he did. Like everything as far as like extreme electric guitar. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And tapping and all the shit. Like, um, I thought the whammy bar was invented in the Wayne's World movie. <laughs> yeah. Dude. yeah. Oh, in sorry. A car beat, wrong? Yeah. oh, sorry. There we go. <laughs> um, yeah, no, you guys definitely are like masters of the whammy. I just have I've I've wanted to make this observation for a while that uh I feel like Tosin Abasi is one of the biggest like innovators on guitar, and he's as far as I know, he never uses a whammy bar. And it's kind of funny that he doesn't. That's, yeah. He like he's like innovating like the opposite direction. And then like whammy's like expressive in a wholly different way, mm-hmm. like more like voice style musical. But it's kind of been taken into the thump thing and going somewhere else now. And it's like yeah, he kind of like jumped into Ben's territory. He like got a guitar and just yeah, back up. No, I mean, actually, <laughs> you know, like uh, not to like probably say the same story over and over again, but yeah. One of their, their first one of their first tours, they were opening for us. So it was just Tosin just like oh, doing all the God, things like the whole go. time. <laughs> I know, I, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, it's like why, he'd, he'd, look, he'd be like, Yeah, you want a fucking lesson? I'm like, I'm too drunk. Dude. I can't do it. But just watching, like, he'd just <laughs> check out this new thing I came up with. And I'd be like, What the? F-? Like, he'd be acoustic on an electric and it just sounded like a fucking like, it was like such a crazy sound he'd get from it. I'm like, All right, dude, we'll um hit up victor wooden dude i don't know like what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> like um no but uh, yeah like steve i came out to his shows and for like our fucking show too and like i was like what the fuck this guy's like 
next level like fucking shredder but they think he was just like in reflux a band that would come through with animosity yeah you know it's just oh, like totally wild he was obsessed though like he was he like was a shredder like a motherfucker yeah. even back then too yeah oh totally yeah. oh yeah even in like a, i mean i first met him when he uh filled in for born of osiris he was playing on on that band we were on summer slaughter with us and i was like i didn't even know him and he's all check out my band that's coming out soon it's animals as leaders and i was like cool dude and i like so- listened to it i was like holy fuck this is crazy but i didn't understand it i was just like it's progressive crazy stuff and then like i saw the videos behind it and i was like oh shit all right man well i don't know what to do anymore <laughs> like, <you know? laughs> like, yeah but, but yeah that's that's a off thing it just i don't know like whammy's in its own world like mm-hmm. still progressing you guys are helping progress it by doing like harmonize whammies and i love stuff. that i respect whammies whammies aren't cool it... anymore i mean what, what, the people are trying to make whammies not cool anymore like all the new keysel guitar companies like they don't have whammies on anything you know it's all like fixed bridge or evertune or no headstock the, no headstock and like gross and the, yeah it's like all the <laughs> i mean at least like cynic and stuff had whammies you know, yeah. it's like, <laughs> you know like it's like now they're not cool all of a sudden i think it's because of the uh People just getting lazier, not wanting to restring them, which I just took all my guitars to Matt Satello and he restringed all of them because I didn't want to do it either. But uh, shout no, out, shout <laughs> out. Satello no, guitars, dude. They're a pain in the ass to deal with, especially if you like want to change a tuning or do something like it's like like a whammy is kind of like a, a pain in the ass. But you know, there's but a lot it's of things. All, you it's can all about do what it. your goal is. You know, if you want to, you want to break down the walls between tunings and and really explore the full spectrum of sound a whammy bar will get you there a lot faster than retuning and all that kind of shit i this think is, like this is a dumb dumb trying to be yeah. in the conversation with you guys like <laughs> i know well, thanks, like, dude. one no i think um, okay my my brain wraps around it like this okay as soon as you bend that whammy bar the tuning that you just made is totally whacked out and you got to bend it into a point where you're in the next tuning and then you can do some shit there. Or... It's not. It's not that crazy, but it's. Oh, okay. I mean, you will die in soul use because you get my poo. <laughs> no, oh. dude, don't fuck around, dude. I'm truly. No, no, really no okay, no, that's... fucking wrap my head around it. No, it's it's basically it's a spring system that holds some. You know how bridges and a guitar are. Yeah, set. I understand. So it lets off the tension of the know, strings. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, here we go, so here it go. makes it it makes them like it, more noodly. You don't drop the your... you don't drop the wine bar and like go. Oh, I'm in this tuning now. You don't do that. You're usually focused on like a string or two. You okay. bend the like, notes. All right. All yeah. Right. So you're worried about a note, not like not, not the whole tuning, because they're all like different. Um, so you wouldn't want to like strings. play a chord and and then hit a whammy. It you would, can. Would, okay. Yeah, it depends on how you hit the whammy, though. So, it just yeah, doesn't. It it bends. It doesn't change to a different tuning. It just bends all the strings at the same time. So it's more like yeah. a pitch shifter type deal. Mm-hmm. Kind of. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Yeah. There you go. Come on, guys. I'm. Uh, there's a. No. Uh, there's a I enjoy your like not knowing. Our, <laughs> there's a percentage of our audiences who, who is sitting in there they're like this just with me like hey anthony fucking speak up dude you're the vocalist dude let's <laughs> we don't we don't fucking know shit dude like ask you know, i love dude. it i like it actually it's yeah. fucking good so ben what what kind of uh floyd rose do you have <laughs> a big long one <laughs> <laughs> no how do you guys uh how do you guys end up starting the bands off uh down the road so I did. I moved up to Seattle with the band I formed at Musicians Institute. We got a house together. Like we were gonna like take over the world, dude. And um, that was fun. It all fell apart, you know. Uh, then I wasn't doing. I was doing a cover band f- for a couple of, like a year. Um, and we would do just like all genres of metal, from like King Diamond to Carcass. Um, and that was with Woody, who I met through work. We both uh, taught at the School of Rock up here. Um, and when I when we uh, first met at work, we're like both really awkward. We really didn't talk for months and months and months. And then I remember at one work meeting, I wore a Balthagoth shirt, and he nice. came up to me. He was like, uh, I, "Nice shirt. I really like that band." <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, All right, let's jam because no one likes that band at all <laughs> or you know i mean uh, so we just started jamming decided to do the cover band for fun uh, and then kind of brought my old band back for one show with woody and jeremy our drummer of zoth and 
it was fun. It just didn't feel right. So disbanded that. Um, and then at one of our cover shows, I met Ben. He came up to me afterwards. I was like, that was cool. Wow. Why did you play dissection? <laughs> you know, <something> like that. <laughs> and then, yeah, <laughs> we just talked, we discovered, um, that we both went to MI. Uh, we had mutual friends. He played bass. I was like, oh, I need a bass player. I want to do that. So, but let's let's stop it right there for you, Tyler, because I want to go back a little bit. We didn't really hear any of Ben's previous projects before the band. Ben, did you have a band? There were none. There's I zero. Checked. Oh, okay. No, you oh. told me you played in like Warbringer or something, right? Yep. Yes, I did. Well, the end. Yeah, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> there was a yeah. question, fan question. Uh, how do you reflect back on Warbringer waking into nightmares? Well, to be honest and blunt, you know, do it. Uh, we were pretty much pushed into writing and recording an album in about two months after touring all the time. And we we're all kids. And I think yeah. that uh, people had invested a lot of money into us. That's a small window, dude. Yeah, two months. So we managed to do it and we recorded it. And I'm really happy with the product because of the pressure actually produced something good. And I feel like if it's up to your own time limit, it's just going to drag on and on and on. But if you set, a, that dead, too, if you set a deadline, then... You know that happens, but it was. I'm, uh, I'm, that's 100 for me too, dude. Deadlines yeah, I, will make me start going. Hey, don't fucking. I'll, I'll uh, Casey's I'll gone, dude. Casey's gone. Don't make any deadlines for the odious vocals yet. <laughs> hey man, we're gonna need those by February 16th. <laughs> All right, On thanks, Valentine's bro. Day. Yeah, yeah. Is yeah. that Valentine's Day? <laughs> no, no, no. 14th. Uh, Valentine's Day. <laughs> yeah, so uh, to 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 make it brief here, uh, I think that was a dark time for all of us in the band. It, it was uh, really brutal. I was going through a ton of personal stuff, and so were the other guys. And uh, we were done with that, and the album was really good. But then we were just like thrown out for uh, 100 shows in 101 days. So it was like Jesus. You know, there was no stop. And uh, I'm happy that I experienced that because it made me a tough person. But uh, if I was in control of millions of dollars and what people can see and what people can hear, I wouldn't just keep doing the same thing that people have been doing for 60, 70 years, which is exploiting young people and making a profit off of them. And uh, also there's people in the business that uh, manipulate things that are horrible people and they use blackmail i mean that's just like the story of hollywood los angeles mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's been going on for like 100 years and yeah dude. there there were some people that were really great to work with but there's also predators so uh that's yeah what, that's what i learned i also learned that it's so easy to just push a band through music videos and magazines and radio play to get people to like them. I remember the first tour we did the first night in San Diego, people were asking for my autograph and I wasn't even on the record. They didn't even know. So I feel like with enough money in a project, they get their, uh, their money back. They make their millions. And, you know, I think I made a thousand dollars. Yeah. I yeah. get my, uh, I get my royalty check every year and it's like, I don't know, 12 bucks, something like that. <laughs> But, uh, you know, it's a it's a messed up business. And I'm glad that it's people are kind of aware of that these days. And one of the reasons why I like our band is because we own everything. We yeah. produce our, everything and we stay very, very far away from that business model. If you can even call it a business model, it's just robbery. Damn. Yeah, it's just like uh, pushing, pushing a quick product, making their money back, plus a little on the top and then move on That's and then pretty they, much and they flip it and they and they were in uh cahoots with finberg oh god <laughs> i know i don't want to get in that but yeah no i know i know that's, i know that's, a little too much about that that's what it was no no totally that was the i mean business. that's 
I mean, oh, well, so so he was he was the promote uh, the booking agent for Warbringers. What you're saying? Yeah, and everyone yeah. else at that time. Yeah, yeah. No, I remember he, you know, reached out to us to get uh, decrepit on it because remember, I think what it might have been on that tour, he called us and was just screaming at us and cussing us out for not signing with them. We're like, no, dude, we're we don't need you. We're not going to do this. And luckily, we did that. But uh, anyway, it's not like you know, there's a bunch of people. Obviously, he's one of the biggest you know on the bad side on the bad side of things mm-hmm. um and there you know there's people that are you know and it's pretty honestly but it's not very common to see and uh that's actually so that leads you into the whole you know you guys being like fuck it diy fuck yes. all this shit let's make our money it's like you know like uh we you know make fun of icp all the time i mean not anthony because it's one of his favorite bands <laughs> but uh <laughs> but uh they uh but they, you know, that's why they got so fucking filthy rich is they just fucking were like, no, no record labels. We'll print our merch. We'll do all of our things. We'll print our all of our albums. And they just like got super huge and made a bunch of money from it because there wasn't a, you know, a, a vulture on the top taking taking all the, the main earnings out, you know. So it yep. definitely how's that been going for you guys being a DIY band and like like, you know, starting as like a, a band that's, you know, starting pretty much from the ground up. And being DIY, how does that work? Especially because you guys are fucking amazing live, so everyone's fucking listening to you when they see you. They're like, "What the fuck?" Like me, I like saw it immediately and was like, "That's insane!" Like, what the fuck is that? Like, why aren't they on metal? You know, my brain did that whole thing, did the whole like song and dance of like, "Why aren't you guys on a major label?" Um, but why is that influence so uh, present with you guys? I think, Besides the stories you just said, I mean. I can speak for us in saying, well, I mean, Tyler's right here. You can also back me up. But I think that we just want to be in control mm. of this. And and uh, like we're we're having like conversations right now about like, do we really want someone else or some something else to be doing the shipping and handling? You know, like we, we even focus on on doing all the orders ourselves. And this this is the my second bedroom in my apartment. That's our shipping and handling. It's kind of empty right now but it's usually stacked and uh the only the i I say the only thing that's kind of irritating about it is that since we don't have a label a lot of like festivals or you know industry people look at us and go "Eh, well i don't know i don't know if they're trustworthy oh yeah so that's that's pretty much it but other than that i mean we're doing pretty good yeah it's a weird like give and take deal with record labels and bands now that just listening to you guys talk right now it's making me think like the the record labels and the 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 guys who sign the bands and all the agents and all this kind of shit they're not the art and they're not the artist no but they are uh uh an entity that wants to make money off of art and artist. Yeah. Yeah. But they have the Avenue to get the distribution and get the tours set up and all that. So they're like, Hey, we can pull these strings, but you have to give us the goods. That's really what it is to give us the art. Yeah. And we'll give you the least amount out of the whole fucking deal at the end. It's you know, a, it's yeah. like, what the fuck, dude? Cam. Yeah, so we just think, like, you know, we don't want to take, like, a big advance. We don't need it. Um, just, like, be in debt to somebody. A lot of they, they want to own the rights to the masters. And he was a... Frank Zappa, Ben loves him. I like him. Oh, yeah. Ben really loves Fucking him. Fucking love Zappa, dude. So I'm he's like, never do it. That never sell your masters. That's your retirement money. Mm-hmm. Uh, and just the deals are really one sided. Like, so we, we may have been offered something. We saw that oh, we could do all these shows. We'd probably be super broke. Um, and I'm not like opposed to ne- necessarily like signing to a label or something. It would just have to be an understanding. Like, we can make you money, but you need to make us money and like care. But yeah, the, the whole gatekeeping aspect and um, yeah, not getting asked on tours and festivals because of that. It's that's the crappiest part. Or even yeah, shows. Like, yeah, I mean, it's like what you were saying, Ben. It's like 
you know, you have these, you know, high up people going like, well, what's this going to do for us if they don't want to fucking, you know, come along on the journey with, you know, with the label? It's like, why would we ask this band? It's like, we have money to make and they're not interested in it. So we'll go to another band. So it's, it's like, it's kind of like, uh, so funny is that they, they would pass up Zoth and go for a less talented band. Totally. To make, put more money in their pocket, you know? Yeah. Because they this is it. They don't is, care, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's bottom they, line. So what, if their pockets are fatter at the end of the night, it doesn't matter. Oh shit. What up? I just rhymed. <laughs> <laughs> I see figure if we keep pattern. going, maybe we'll meet, you know, the right person or entity one day that would want more of like, yeah, partnership rather than like uh, being uh, in, in serfdom to yeah. some yeah. corporation or something. Yeah. Um. So how much time out of the, you know, work week does it take to be in a band that's doing everything? Depends. There's there's weeks like booking a tour is just like it's, it's so much work. It's like it's awful. <laughs> I hate doing it. Yeah. Um, sometimes we'll spend hours and hours shipping from you know anywhere from two to fifteen Eight. hours a week. You know, it depends how much. Um, or if and then there's, there's like just, a new release. You know, we'll be we'll be totally man. Like when the vinyls came out, that was. I was all week. Yeah. That was, <laughs> that was crazy. I was like 30, 40 hours, honestly. Just on top yeah. of that. So I mean, yeah. just day-to-day stuff. It's uh, I don't know, just being on top, email, social media, and all that. So it varies, I guess. And and for DIY, we're not talking just uh shipping and, and merch, but you guys also recorded the album yourself, right? Ben, you produced it. Yeah. I'm yeah. Uh, I mixed and mastered the first one. And uh, Joe mixed the second one. Our friend Julian mastered it. I worked with him the entire time. So, yeah, yeah, that that was a lot of work. The the first one made a lot of mistakes, but that's how you learn. Hey, hey. Yeah, lessons, <laughs> lessons. Yeah, do it before it's uh. Yeah, it's all gotta, about yeah. those lessons, and then making sure you. Um, have an example of you learning that lesson on the next thing. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, the track, the tracking for the drums was, oh man, the we we are so. Oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> we're here, so, dude. So, Let's hear so, it. So for the first album, we were gonna record the drums in our um, guitar player's basement, and like the heater wasn't working. It was winter, and. Uh, like every like the gear just kept breaking and everything was it was just fucked everything was fucked and the whole time i was thinking about how uh geishas when they learn how to play the uh you know that their guitar or whatever that they put yeah. their hands in water in winter you know outside and they play with wet hands in the winter and i was like it's all right jeremy this is what the geishas do it's gonna make the product so good dude and, and, like i kept lying to myself in, in my head that it was gonna be great it was terrible <laughs> yeah like we could have done it at the rehearsal room the entire time but i was just thinking about uh geishas <laughs> yeah so so fucking genius sometimes i swear it's like the so, shamisen right the shamisen guitar yeah yeah yeah, yeah, uh, yeah okay yeah, that's the one but yes yeah. they do that it's insane they used mm-hmm. to I was yeah. gonna say I was gonna say Japanese banjo because I forgot the name. <laughs> Those things are cool. But on this pretty much where this, it is. On the second one, we recorded in our rehearsal space, and uh, our relationship, me and Jeremy, our drummer, got a lot better, and uh, we clicked really well for that one. So That's cool. The, perfor- the performances were really good. I did uh, the uh, editing, like pre-production stuff, and sent it over to Joe, and we took it from there. That's rad. Um, it sounds amazing. And just because you mentioned Jeremy, um, I went and checked out the album he did with Lecherous Nocturne back in the day, earlier today. Um, and he followed up the one that Dallas Tollerwade did drums on, that the first Lecherous is is Dallas on drums. I listened I to that, that too. It's Holy fucking shit. crazy. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. He he mentioned it on our, our episode with him. Oh, but I didn't I didn't even check it out back ago. then. Yeah, I know. Um but so Jeremy, uh, yeah, I guess he was in Lecherous Nocturne, and then he like hooked up with you guys. Must have come over to the Wait, West Coast at some point. On, okay, I did, I 
this is he I'm said sorry, that. i think dallas. he said that. I, you're probably not listening to this but i'm sorry dallas i forgot <laughs> that you mentioned that you drummed on some shit too you fucking that guy's an all-around badass <laughs> I Dude. didn't even know he drummed on that album, and Jeremy's one of my best friends. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. I feel good now. All right. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's pretty fucking random. Um, and that, I remember asking Dallas, I'm like, I I heard that you like demoed some Nile songs on drums. He's like, No, I was never that good. Uh, but then I listened to the Lecherous album that he drummed on, and it's like really fucking good. And I'm like, dude, you could have probably <laughs> demoed some Nile songs. So I don't know what you're going on. But uh, he was like a Dave Suzuki it, before his time. Yeah, he's a Dave Suzuki, dude. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Totally. Um, but yeah, dude, when we saw you guys, Jeremy was awesome live and his drums sound killer. You you guys engineered it really well on this album. Thank the you. The last one. Yeah. Sounded great. I know what uh Casey's, you know, he he got me to say it in the beginning, but I'm gonna say it again. Like you guys live <laughs> he's, before the podcast, before you guys jumped on, he's all I know you're gonna talk about him live like a million times. So uh I'm ready for it. Um, yeah, man, it seemed like a for because a venue that's not known for good sound and not known for, you know, I mean, unless Max is doing in front of house, which he wasn't. Um, it base it sounded like a fucking like legit, like huge headlining metal band. I was like, because I mean, the way the battle solos went between each other, the way I was, I was like, then I, there's a video I have. I'll send it to you guys where it's like battle solos. And then I go over to fucking Ben and Ben's just slapping the shit out of his bass, like jumping on the fucking PA. It's like, it's just everything's going on that like a, a, a fan wants to see. I'm just like, uh, like this I'm is like, a make... Wednesday night with like 10 I people know. in the audience. Like, <laughs> yeah, totally. No, I yeah. was like, I, I was like Wednesday, dude. I'm like, fuck, can you drive me and like be my chauffeur? Cause I, I have too much, you know, in the morning and stuff to do, but man. And Chase was sitting there with his fucking flip phone and he was sitting there <laughs> recording you with his flip phone. And I look over at Chase. He's just going like, with his flip phone, and I'm like, damn, dude, <laughs> he's got a flip phone. <laughs> oh, dude, him and uh, him and Naveen, or they went strictly flip phone, dude. You know, Naveen? they're yeah, from animosity. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, he almost like, came out that I night, like but that no. guy. Oh, totally. Yeah, no, he's uh, he's the shit, bro. He just moved he's away sick. to Tennessee. Yeah, yeah. No, they're fucking. Oh, dude, that's 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 a rough that's one, dude. Like friends leaving that far away. I know. Now I'm like now I'm like I mean I'm not that close to Naveen and Cheney, but I'm like now that they're there I'm like hmm at some point I'm gonna have to make an excuse to get out there oh yeah no totally I'm gonna f- definitely go visit them for sure go like see a show or watch them play or something but they got like mm-hmm. a fucking you know they moved to Tennessee from California California is super expensive and they got like a fucking humongous house now and they're like like their first podcast back they're like I don't know why I was ever in California. <laughs> like, yeah, like that was that was uh that was Naveen's like first line. He's like, dude, I've like there's zero regret from this. This is amazing. Like, have a humongous house. Like, as much of it's a music town. They like, gotta find know. the legit hot chicken place. Everybody says Nashville hot chicken, dude. Find the oh, legit yeah, yeah. one. Then when we, when I make it out there, that's where we're going, dude. Totally, totally. I I went on tour with Naveen when he was drummer for the Faceless. Oh nice. shit! Oh yeah. fuck! Were, who are you Back playing with? There. Warbringer? Yeah. Oh that nice. Was with, that was with. Uh, kind of crazy now. I think about it. It was us, unexpected, the faceless, suicide, silence, and Nile. What the what fuck? A, see, that's my brain that's, is just like, what is going on? Here? Early two thousands fucking tours, dude. Like, yeah, that's that was that is the exact tour that I would go. Yeah, it's like a showcase of like a Dude. bunch of different styles. It's like, what the fuck? It's like a, it's like your balls hot, balls cold, balls hot. It's like, yeah. <laughs> it, no matter it, any of those bands you didn't understand or know before you went there, you would, it would be in the mix, and all of that would be acceptable that night. You know, what's crazy about that is uh, we would do off shows because Nile likes to take like one or two days off a week. Wait, Odius was supposed to be on this fucking tour, dude. Oh, really? Really? Yeah, it we it was uh, odious and uh, unexpected. Were uh, we were he- neck and neck, and then we got oh fucking, unexpected. Beat us. The the carpet Oops. was pulled out from underneath us. Dude. It was a good oh. thing you didn't go, man. It sucked. Oh, sick, dude. <laughs> Thanks. It really was. <laughs> well, what, what I wanted to say was we would do off shows with Suicide Silence, and I mean they're a huge band, right? Like mm-hmm. they're massive. But we would play with them somewhere. Fuck the bass player. And dude. there's like three or four, three or four people in the audience at that time. 
Wow. Damn. I don't, what bass player? The the old guy. <laughs> the bass player. Like... No, I'm just joking. The no, no, no. The old, he said all time best friend. No, no, no. He's talking about the oh. that's before dance time. I remember oh, okay. their bass player looked like the the doll Chucky from the movie. Yeah, yeah, he looked yeah, like, he like, the, he like the, he had like a he had like a caveman brow. <laughs> yeah, he's like, oh yeah, dude, I like love my bong. Yeah, no, nah, dude, my <laughs> my lifelong man mate, best friend Dan Kenny, he replaced him. <laughs> oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. Two thousand eight or something. Two thousand eight or nine, something like that. But yeah, then he's a, he's like an old time death metal guy, and you know, it's like it's funny to see him in Suicide Silence now, but whatever. I love all those guys. I can't even say cool. the name. <laughs> they probably make okay money, man. You yeah, know? I mean, it's probably a sick job. Yeah, it's pretty. Yeah, I mean, it, they're like it's like a it's like a oh, fuck. I shouldn't say this. Whatever. I used to help. I worked at a financial institution a long time ago, and uh, there was a member of the band, you know, that was in a big band. It's like Metallica style band. That's like one of the top big four ones, you know. And uh, I would just. <laughs> I looked to see what he get paid. This is like totally a violation. Um, and it wasn't that much. It, was, it wasn't like it was per show. I was, you know, arena shows and stuff. And I was like looking at like it was daily, like, I don't know, like 1000 to 2000, maybe something like that. I mean, it's not. But I mean, not you're playing, much. but you're playing for fucking 17,000 people. Is that I mean, I don't know. So I guess you get like everyone less has than a dollar a person in the pot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get like a few cents per person, something like that. I don't know. It's like, you know. So let's just say hypothetically, this was Metallica. This wasn't James Hedfield, obviously. Stop doing this the was... deduction thing, dude. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if it's a thousand dollars a day, it had to have thousand dollars a day. It must have been Scott Ian. <laughs> he's like, Roger stomps in. He's like, where's my check? <laughs> <laughs> It's just, you know, I've helped like famous UFC fighters and stuff and, and like looked at their stuff and I was like, shit, you, like Jesus, like you're not like your brain is like millions. And it's like, how about uh, 10,000 times four? I don't know. You know, like, like it's not that much. You know, it's like, I don't know. There's certain like mate, like made it areas, like the headlining fucking made it area of like a big band is like fucking millions. But like if you're semi below that, you're fucking a quarter of that or less. It's like, you know, obviously, like the main guys taking all the money and bringing all the other bands along, but I don't know. I'm just blabbing now, so I like. Hey, you know, like, you know what? I was laughed at for this saying this before, but mm. if I can make fifty thousand dollars a year playing extreme metal music, that's all I need. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, exactly. I'm just kidding. Exactly. <laughs> no, I give you the thumbs up on that, dude. Fifty thousand dollars a year if you you don't have fucking seventeen kids like I do, like Joel always 17. says. Seventeen. <laughs> He's no, got four. I, got, I got three, but he always he's got 17. five. <laughs> um, three and a half. You could do fifty thousand a year, right? You and a, maybe a partner who's also got a job. You could do that. Yep. Yeah, if you got like someone else, you have to have a partner though. Once if that partner were to bail and they're dating someone that's going to leave a bunch too, so you have to deal with that possible. I don't know. We're getting deep. But uh, <laughs> why not? How do you I mean, really? This is fucking Cali to the podcast, dude. Yeah, <laughs> I'm down. I'm down. I'm, I mean, it's I'm like married, that's real life. I'm married, and and that's you know something that we've talked about before. Yeah, and uh, you know, I'd love, I'd love to be able to do that because I mean, why are why else are we here? Totally, yeah. dude. So you know, if I can make it my goal to make money doing what I love doing, then. That's ideal. If you know, until then, I'm going to be a freaking construction worker. But you know, yeah, yeah. I until mean, then, I'm going to align cars all day, dude. Exactly. You know? Yeah. I'm I'm in the automotive industry to pay my bills, and I still have my passion on the side. I give that little sliver of life, you know, keep it that active. But it's like, if I could just fucking make money, make. I don't even make money off this podcast, but if I can make money off a podcast <laughs> and a fucking couple of bands, dude, like, and still have, I'd have extra time with my kids all day. Like, come on. Hey, I got an idea. It just came to me. Boom. How about, how about a podcast where it's like, uh, the lighting's lava red, right? Like Joel's room, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? It's lava red everywhere. And it's you interviewing celebrities or whoever, okay. but, it's a wide angle shot and both of you are sitting on toilets with your pants down. Uh, okay. I think that could that could work. I think that that could be like a one you have to do that like you get like that one celebrity. It's kind of like the Eric Andre thing. Like you have to like 
because f- they like fuck with celebrities <laughs> yeah, and stuff. We're not really known for that, but I mean, I, <laughs> I'm going to be known like, for it. No, I'm saying like it'd be funny to like time your farts to where when they're actually being serious and answering a question, you know. Like, no, no. When you have like off. when I chime in, like I have to be farting like to start off my. Oh, you're <laughs> farting as you're asking the question. Oh. That's actually fucking. That's that's talent, bro. The camera can serious. see through the porcelain every once in a while. Because you got depending on the question. <laughs> because and you, you can ex- see how long the wiener goes into the water and back out <laughs> if they're nervous. And-, <laughs> and you have expulsion from both ends, too. You're like pushing out and pushing <gasps> air out as you're talking. Dude, dude we're like- fucking we're just sitting on all this money and just not doing it. It's weird. Yeah. We have all these ideas. <laughs> like- <laughs> yeah, I know. It's getting stolen right now, dude. Yeah, some of the audience. Oh, I know, dude. No, if you didn't know, yeah, Pimberg, he's watching. no copyrights. Ah. <laughs> All right, I got a list of uh fan questions we we should start getting to so we can yeah. answer them all. Uh, shout out to the fans who uh ask questions. So, uh, let's start with what does Zoth mean? Take it away, Tyler. So, uh honestly, I was sitting on my my couch with my friend Phil, and I like. Okay, I really like Balsagoth. Uh, so we wanted like an epic name that was like Sugar Masoth, you know, or something like that. <laughs> and just like we were getting drunk, blurting it out, blurting words out. I'm like, well, what if it's just the ending, like Zoth? I'm like, that's cool. So uh, looked it up, and it was like a HP Lovecraft, like a planet or sun, I think it's called. I'm like, oh, perfect. I love that stuff. And presented it to everyone else. They're like, yeah, let's, let's do it. It's short, one word, one syllable. Yeah, sick. And it has it an X. And it has, it has an X. I, uh, I would have tried to play it as a Scrabble word if I could. Yeah. I'd try to get away with it. but Metal Scrabble. Can you bring that cat back, please? Oh, yeah. She really wants to uh, make an appearance. <laughs> We're uh, cat friendly. This is Mary Jane. Nice. She, oh. she, talk, she talks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> mine's right. Mine's right here. You can see him kind of as a shadow. <laughs> he won't. He won't hang out though. Say, she's like attention, attention. If you put, can you put the speakers on for a second to hear another cat? Will it? Will he come? No, nah, he won't care. No. <laughs> uh, what are your biggest influences, metal wise? Um. So I like without getting like too specific i'm just like everything from like dying fetus i think to, they want to rhapsody be specific though that specifically <laughs> like the two bands i really look up to where it's like catchy but also gets super weird king diamond yeah balsagoff say it again but yeah oh yeah but like well, two like biggest if i have to cite two so. yeah yeah oh yeah who's your favorite uh is, is andy laroque the only uh, guitar player for no, they have uh, they've had two. He's like the only guy that's been there the whole time. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. But he's yeah, one of my all time favorites. Hell yeah. Oh yeah. Fuck yeah. I also got the, the rules, dude. Uh, yeah, they're it. so good. Battle like, magic the, is and that, shit. That's like, like the like, sci fi like oh dude, they're metal super band, good. Right? That's like sci fi fantasy Lovecraft, yeah. HP Howard. They just like take everything and combine all the, it. And all, just, take all the evil from all those areas and just yeah. put it into some. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I've, they're, I've they're from England, across, right? Yep. Yeah. 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 Balsa Goth is great, dude. It's like symphonic too, right? It's, yeah. There's just yeah, like no uh, other band like them. Uh, there really isn't. Like, I'm my favorite gonna... is battle magic and then the one like after it like a cosmic power something. cosmic power cosmic and like yeah dude that's like my favorite but that all they're all good that i've heard yeah i think uh it's hard to pick i think battle magic it's like it's not a concept album really and it has the most like cool mm-hmm. uh individual songs but what about uh, that the crows will pick your bones it, yes <laughs> Yeah, I love that. Have you heard that, Anthony? You know, you've heard that. No, dude, I've only heard one. I've only heard one Sagoth album that I don't even know what it's called. I'm trying to fucking figure it out right now. Well, Battle Magic is the one that we always like used to have, and then Mm -hmm. we like got the other one. I I stumbled across it in like a a a black metal rabbit hole of like demu gear style black metal and it somehow got i just remember getting to balzagas somehow it's way more playful <laughs> yeah than, than demu you know 
I mean, it's more, it's kind of got some power metal influence. Yeah. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. More triumphant with with you guys as well, like, like trumpets and the stuff. power metal influence. Like you guys tastefully inject that into this more extreme style of you know, because the death and black thing has been you know m- merging for you know decades, mm-hmm. but this technical death metal mixed with black metal and heavy metal thrash and and avant-garde i i I really want to i know i just keep saying that word but i still want to give like a little like seasoning of avant-garde to you guys dude because there's certain things that i only hear in like these other have you talked about the artwork yet and the concepts and stuff no actually we haven't i'm kind of curious about that because it is is the newest thing from 2019 is, is that the yeah, yeah yeah okay that super sick like crazy art with that like eye and the yeah oh, before we get into <laughs> that that's what i, I no i just wanted to finish what i Mark was Richards. Just, oh yeah sorry power metal. Ahead, yeah, I wanted sorry to... i i i just no, wanted to get it, this out taking the power metal aspect and throwing that in the mix of that is is something that you know has been attempted and it didn't really you know resonate with me but with you guys like Cause I like power metal. It's mm. like kind of like keep your peanut butter out of my chocolate type deal. Like, like uh, power metal and death metal don't really mix. You know, it's like oil and water almost for a lot. But then now you've taken it, taken me out of that, and made me realize, like, no, dude, po- there can be power death metal, dude. Yeah, right? uh, so- sound yeah. of perseverance. Yeah, totally, know, totally. Chuck, I think Chuck was like yeah. a big power metal fan. Oh, yeah. um, and there's certain aspects of that I I mm-hmm. definitely taste a lot of fucking Chuck Schuldner in the like rhythms be- behind your solos or not solos, but there's at least one. I think it what is it? Back to the Jungle. That that song's got uh, a a section in it that's totally sounds of perseverance vibe you know like that and nice. like avant-garde i mean we all like prog rock too and um jazz fusion and to oh, try like yeah. bring all that in in like cool interesting ways and you did it all tastefully that's the, that's the word that i like to use with you guys is mm-hmm. tastefully i think Not we only, balance each other it, it's a balance yeah. and and, yeah. and it's like it's fresh and in another word is organic. Like I, I feel the human aspects of you guys when I listen to it too. It's like, it's everything that I really look for in a metal band, dude. So fucking yeah, dude. Thanks. Thank you. You, you gained a few fa- a handful of fans with this pot, you know, doing this episode and Joel and Joseph bringing Casey and me into the oh, mix. Dude, I've been showing totally, my friends. He's we're totally it to a few friends. We're in the circle. I sent it to dude. Josh. I sent it to like Josh is all into it. Like our friend who's like always sending us music. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah, if yeah. You want and 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 yeah. people probably on this uh out, the audience He's like these guys are so sick. People who are listening never heard of you guys. Yeah, Josh is the guy that we always talked about. He would be. We always he was always yeah. feeding us shit and like if we fed him things we'd be always be like oh dude he liked it fuck yeah dude <laughs> <laughs> yeah well let me just say because i was the guy who found you guys out of Boom. the four oh. of us yeah. <laughs> that i i think it was a uh, no clean singing blog post about you guys i yeah. i don't remember exactly but for some reason that's what i remember mm. they just did a write-up so those write-ups are helpful because i'm just like Zoth, that's a cool band name. And then I'm like immediately like, oh, I like sci fi, tech death, tech trash, whatever. So yeah, just those blog posts, uh, write ups totally help just attract viewers and listeners. So yeah, it works. Dude, we're very grateful for like yeah, all the really good ones we got. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, we are. Yeah, dude. And, and being an independent DIY band too, I was actually somewhat surprised with how many questions we got for you guys too like joseph still got a list probably yeah i'm gonna ask another one now um let's see sorry penis size uh this is a good one <laughs> uh well this this ties into the last question so what was the inspiration behind interdimensional invocations 
Uh, so like artwork wise, we talked about it a lot. Wanted like some sort of ritual. Like a lot of our lyrics are about like interdimensional influence and stuff like uh, lost ancient civilizations. Exactly. So I told Mark Richards, we're like, I want like a lost ancient city, a portal with some God tentacled God coming out. And I want there to be like buildings within the portal that you glimpse of their like crazy architecture. And then these dudes uh, with melting faces summoning them because their faces are melting because of what they see. And Mark did that. <laughs> it was really cool. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it just it came together pretty easily. I feel like. Yeah. Are you guys into psychedelics? Uh, I. Was. Yeah, it's been a while. It was. But I, I, I've delved. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Now I'm, I'm like right, right now. That sounds totally psychedelic, <laughs> dude. So that's what I wanted to ask. <laughs> well, the Lovecraft thing for sure. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. no doubt. Well, I mean, that's fucking for sure. Evil psychedelic as fuck, dude. We yeah. love uh, pyramids and you know, alternative history and things like that. We're really into that, you know, yeah, lost history and you know, yeah. ancient mysteries and stuff. Yeah, totally. I went to uh, Peru like many years ago and just like all these cool ruins and I've just been like obsessed with that kind of stuff or since I was a kid, really nice. Nice, dude. Uh, uh, Graham, Graham Hancock is actually a, fucking yep, dude that was from. like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Fingerprints or fingerprints. Of the gods is what got me into yep. it. Um, Oh, yeah. cool. Like he did a book signing up here and I got to go meet him. And I was like, I showed him like my map I got in Peru. I was like, dude, I mean, and it, it's like hearing him and cool. Randall Carlson together and Randall going off on his fucking, uh, was it, uh, the sacred geometry shit. Yeah. And, 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 and all, I love listening. I'm too stupid to like fully absorb maybe point. I'd probably get like 0.005%. <laughs> I can get like the grand picture. I'm like the same way, but I yeah, think yeah. he's like, he's on, you know, they're onto something. Cause I think there are totally. like, Oh, totally. Sacred geometry patterns that repeat in everything. <laughs> and, David, like atomic I, levels the, the fractal you know? nature of everything how you know the fissures of giant valleys are the same as like fissures that of rain going down fucking yep you know it's just, just rain erosion on the sphinx and stuff yeah, and yeah. like so much cool stuff um and i don't ever claim to be like i know exactly how it happened in the lost okay. city of atlantis but i just it's like same. thinking about all the possibilities and not totally. like how like, much more fucking fun is it to think about history when it yeah when you're thinking about that? <laughs> where when people get yeah, just dogmatic about things and like we don't we have it all figured out. But uh, <laughs> and I just like I enjoy living my life with like ah, maybe sense you know? of mystery. Mm-hmm. It's I, cool. yeah. And uh, I think that's like uh, just a that's a human thing to wonder about like what's out there. Mm-hmm. So I don't want to like let that go. You like settled. you get to the point where you're like. I don't know. I'll never know. Then maybe becomes more of a thing that's interesting. You're just like the possibilities are endless. Now. It seems like that exactly. was like even like with a, it's like uh, what you're talking about right now or music. Like the people that think I don't know and I don't like they have that like kind of they have that mindset of I don't know rather than like I know. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. musician wise or sicker. Like philosophy wise or sicker. Like everyone's yeah. like. Everyone, like, when you're stuck in, like, the box, you know, and you're, like, you're not willing to be, like, oh, actually, you're changing my opinion. Like, yep. that's, like that's, like, where, like, a lot of things, like, come from people. Um, one of the more visual res- representations of what you guys are talking about um, of just, like, seeing things in history, like, kind of be everywhere kind of thing. It's, like, someone showed me recently a picture of, like, an, an, an human eye, like, zoomed in on. Mm-hmm. Or, and then they showed me a nebula and it looked exactly because I couldn't tell which one was which and I was like what the fuck mm-hmm. is there like some sort of link that like is here that I'm just like it looks the same dude. it's like literally looks the same I'm just it like, is. and from like even you know, Carl Sagan like so totally. from Stardust so whether it's I think science and the unseen will come together one day maybe totally uh, the My cat's for any of us all yep. of us are just gonna keep <laughs> fucking talking about it on podcasts until yep. we die and then dude, we're solving it dude it we're solving problems the the more you think you know the less you really do exactly <laughs> that's what a good saying it's like more money more problems dog yep yep <laughs> it's a wild thing though to be a dad and have uh kids <laughs> 
get going through their existential shit, you know, yeah, I can. <laughs> and, and, um, and having that real, I don't know, that was, there's been questions that my kids and I'll just look them straight in the face. Like, sorry, dude, I don't know the answer to that question. <laughs> um, none of us do, you know, and once you come to terms with that, then we're all going to have a much better time, you know, like, Boy. We all got to that point. It's just like, we don't fucking know. People want to act like they know, but it's really an I don't know. Yep. They can be broken down really quickly when they act like they know to find out they don't know. Or if they ask me, I'll be like, well, here's the literature on that. Aristotle said this. And then <laughs> from there it went down. We'll yeah. just sick the professor on them and just be like, I'm down <laughs> with books too. Yeah. yeah. yeah I read books, dude. <laughs> here's a <laughs> i read Bert. that's, that's a, a anal, that's a anal, that's an anal cunt that's, that's an, an anal, anal cunt, cunt call joke. back yeah. that's that, just that, so that, everybody uh... knows joel had an anal cunt call back right now yeah that one of our buddies um or one of my buddies i don't know if you guys know but the guy that uh he interviews bands in sacramento he interviewed uh seth putnam and he was just fucking just like just got back from his stroke he's fucking wasted and like he's asked it's like one of the funniest fucking like uh suicide silence actually showed it to me they brought me on their bus and like show like dan did just showed me the fucking the interview and he just like they're like what do you like to read on the road he's all i don't know dude i don't read burks dude i don't fucking know <laughs> <Come on>. <laughs> like, <laughs> now it's, it's an inside joke with all of us like all every us, one of my dude. life now like every time someone brings up a burke it's, dude, the, just... it's the it's the most depressing and greatest interview in rock and roll history dude yeah yeah, yeah. wow all right, here's a question. <laughs> uh, I got at least at least two questions. No, three questions for you guys. Uh, uh, what's the best Man of War record? <laughs> Louder than hell. I like. Uh, <laughs> I like uh, In the Glory Ride. Hail to England, Kings of Metal. I'm about to just list all the '80s albums. So <laughs> it's hard to choose, but yeah, I really love uh, Man of War. Sick band. <laughs> okay. I hope that makes the question asker happy because I have nothing to add to that. <laughs> uh, Tyler solo record status update. Yeah. So a couple of people know I'm working on like a kind of synth soundtrack sort of album. Oh, cool. It's like half done. I've been thinking lately, I'm just going to put it out as an EP and stop uh, being like, well, when I get this, this, this. So, mm. so there's what kind of what kind of genre could you what kind of genre would you say like you said synth but what what is it like 80s dark wave synth or what kind of synth is it hard to because I'm, I'm a really big fan of soundtracks and synth synth music and synth rock so anything from john carpenter uh who's mm -hmm. like my my all-time heroes uh to like vangelis that more kind of old school stuff to the uh, newer things carpenter brood i really like all that so it's just kind of like a i took like movies i like uh, escape from new york um, zombie and kind of like thought okay if i was to make those kind of movies and what the soundtrack would be and that was kind of like my inspiration for it i feel like that's your i feel like i mean just like a like a like a psychic thought I just had just now, which I'm not a psychic and I can't even like read. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I feel like you should. I, I feel like you're kind of like a movie composer guy, and I just feel like that's like my like dream. A, that's like my okay. dream job is to do that. Um, so maybe one. I know my my keen, my keen from the faceless. Like I, re, you know, we talk every now and then. He's like composing stuff for TV shows and, and stuff, and getting paid pretty good doing it. Just like just locks himself in his little dungeon, just like fucking composes for the I, I feel like i don't know the way you're just explaining i'm just i'm just telling you your future i hope so i'd love to do that like <laughs> i really would <laughs> cookies fortune yes exactly exactly all right another question sorry mm -mm. no that's no, good we didn't get but, ben's we didn't get ben oh ben uh, oh shit oh shit i'm drunk well, i thought i know that last question ben. was just about Tyler's solo. Oh, record. okay. Oh, so, you know, what do you get? To do, what do you? Hey, Ben, what do you think about uh, what what's uh, Tyler's solo? Project I thought it was a like status it? update for both <laughs> of them. That's I didn't what I know thought. he was uh, actually doing something like that, and he's my next door neighbor and best friend. Oh, so we're causing you guys trauma. are next door from fun. each other right now. Yeah. <laughs> Sick, dude. Yeah, yeah. We got this operation on lockdown. Damn. Oh yeah. Where are you? So you guys are in Seattle. 
Yeah. yeah. Nice. North side. Oh, damn. North side. North side. Seattle. North side. That's where I lost my hair in Fuck Seattle. Um, <laughs> <laughs> El, Cor- El Corazon. Um, oh, yeah, I blew place. out my hair there. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like deaf in one ear because of that place. But anyways, yeah. we'll talk about that later. All right. This is the last yeah. fan question that, uh, well, there are more, but I think we've hit them. I can double check. But this one is, if you guys weren't playing music, what other shenanigans would you guys get yourselves into? Shenanigans. That's a good uh, answer. Just probably yeah. write. <laughs> probably write more. Focus on writing or writing movie. stories, writing poetry. Yeah, stories. Oh, cool. Nice. I'll write some stories, but I just shelve it. Yeah, that's yeah. what most of us writers do. Most shelve it. Ninety percent of anything I've written has not been seen by anybody, and actually, probably like nine ninety percent of everything that has been seen is really hasn't been seen. Because mm-hmm. nobody reads death metal lyrics, dude. <laughs> so, Ben, what kind of like genre of stories do you tell? Like, or, or rice, sorry. Uh, avant <laughs> garde. Boom. The word uh, of the podcast. It's pretty weird avant-garde. stuff. It's it just means say, everything. I would say avant garde satire. Okay. But, but fiction. Please nice. send it to me, dude. I'm I'm nah, like dude. the one fan. I'm the one fan. <laughs> nah, you don't want to open see that. open you open your heart, dude. Open I'm your heart. One fan. I told Ben you need a pen name for that. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 pretty, it's pretty brutal. I mean, it's satire, but in today's day and age, you know, we'll just uh, leave it at that. Okay, I'm 37, <laughs> dude. I don't know what right. today's day and age is, dude. <laughs> All right. Yeah, send it. Yeah, I'd I'll love to it read it. Then. I'll send. Oh, it. Yeah. All right. I don't read, but yeah. And besides music, I would be I would be producing. Also, if you guys can plug my email address, if anybody needs anything mixed, I mean I'm I'm looking for that. Looking for um, it was uh, you you texted it to me, was it? Ben Lawrence Bennett at gmail.com. And where can I where can they hear samples of the stuff you've done? The first off album. Okay, that that's is that the is there anything else you've done? A uh, few other things, but I mean that's probably the most recent one. I got I have a couple of things in the pipeline, but that's hush hush for now. Nice. So, oh yeah. So you got a sample and an email address if you want someone. If you're in Seattle, you're trying to get fucking is anybody it, is it record- for mixing. Anybody mixing? for mixing, engineering, yeah. anything. Fuck yeah! Nice, awesome man. Thanks. Did you what study up? any of that at M- MI? Did you go into any of that stuff at MI, or was I it more? Moment- I did. I did it partially. I did the base yeah. program. Then I switched to uh, to something called independent artist, which was like uh, business and production. You know. Yeah. Independent artist. Yeah. So, That's like maybe the best program, like, actually. Yeah, it, it was. Yeah, I was like, I should have done that one. <laughs> it's all the tools that that we use now. So, planting oh, the yeah. seeds in my head. We all. Uh... We all took dependent artists and we just signed to a label. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, here's your baba goo goo ga. Like, oh, a jelly sandwich? I've never had one of these before. Yeah. But no, yeah, fuck it. That's awesome, dude. That's, that's like, that sounds like an actual like really good class because then there's a lot of places to learn theory and a lot of places to like learn music. But if you're actually when you're at music school, like might as well like learn the business part of it. Cause you know, we have contracts come out with like like what I don't know. Let me read it real quick. Well, we have to have a lawyer look at it or something. It's like you know, it's like I have no idea. Even though it's like pretty laid out, pretty cleanly, it's like it still might mean something else or something. Like yeah. you can get roped into another deal that you have no idea about, and I don't know. It's just like the that uh, legal language is a little fucking finicky. Yeah, it's predatory. Yeah, I agree. As I've gotten deeper into it, I've realized business is sick like knowing business how to do it i wish i had cared about it more but i was like i just want to go to a liberal arts school and study books and not care about that i'm like damn like never thought i would regret having like studied business but here i am mm-hmm. wanting to start my own businesses and should not be knowing standard. how to fucking start yeah yeah so. it should be it should be in schools like but you know like no. they don't want you to be uh, independent you know no 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 it's like yeah they want that dependent artist class over at uh <laughs> room 6a <laughs> yeah yeah no totally i mean i, I was that. the guy that's like oh dude everyone's becoming a business major like what a waste all these you know they could have studied something cool but now i'm like well look what you can do with 
not business majors, nothing. So. <laughs> yeah. Some That's sort true. of balance. Some well, sort business of balance. is very like it, you can be in so many different genres of life. You know, it's like it's yeah. like whereas a lot of these other uh, majors are very specific. Like business is like just business. You could run a fucking exactly uh, like a fish tank company. Like I, I want to have to be the best at fish tanks, dude. You know, I think like, I think in America, like we we have like culture, like such a rich culture. So we all have like our aesthetics and everything comes from culture so we don't need that from like school like we need business taught so that we can like take whatever we learn from culture and our ideas and leverage it it's not like we need the cultural exposure necessarily coming from our educational systems no totally. you do stay in debt mm -hmm. yeah 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 <laughs> i'm saying no, this true. as a college instructor saying this so. <laughs> yeah yeah you teach college no. yeah cool yeah what yeah, when I called him the professor earlier, it wasn't joking, dude. Uh, <laughs> professor, dude. Philosophy, humanities, writing, sick music, badass. Yeah, yeah. Um, his words, he was read Burks. I read shenanigans. I read a lot of Burks <laughs> to get a degree. Um, all right. So this one dude asked six questions. So you ready? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go the through next, them. Fuck the next I'm down. hour. All right. This we is can, we can do a, a rapid question thing. Yeah, let's do, let's do quick fire. All right. Yeah. Yeah. See if it is. Yeah. Uh, if it's framed that way. Pope Adrian 37th asks, number one, how does the creative process? Uh, not only is this six parts, each part. This first one is four parts. So <laughs> damn. So he's, 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 tech, he's into tech questions. Yeah. <laughs> how does the. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> how does the creative. That's hilarious. It's, it's really one question now that I'm reading it. How does the creative process usually start? And then bass first, sick riff, build from there. Here's the lyrics I have. I guess these are all like ways they might start. He's like Jeez. suggesting answers. So, but it's just about the creative process for yeah. a song. Uh, for me, it's like, uh, you know, really like visually thinking or, uh, you know, imagining stuff. So when I'm like doing music, I'm like, what images does this conjure up and, True. So either I'll have like something I've been thinking about or something story I want to like tell. Give us, a, give us an example of like an image that like to a riff, like just think of like one riff and how you would imagine what you're seeing. I just want to know. Right like, on. Okay. Correlation um, in one example. Mountain Machines, like the intro of that song. I just kind of pictured giant snow capped mountains and big like mecha tentacled creatures that have taken over and it's like whoa <laughs> how the coming scope up, of how up, big the scope of how big they are ones. and i was like yeah that's kind of that's one example all right and then i just kind of like shut my brain off and that like comes out how many uh images have tentacles in them for you an alarming amount probably <laughs> <laughs> nice <laughs> hey we're we are uh we are not opposed to cephalopods over here in the odious <laughs> realm either that's true all right uh question two is kind of a repeat so i'm skipping down uh you guys have a great mix between instruments where i never feel like i'm being driven to focus on a particular instrument how do you approach the balancing of who gets the moment to shine during programming i think they mean producing or writing or something yeah i think that uh it's just natural with our personalities and our friendship we we all feel more or less like we kind of keep each other in check so we're all even even playing grounds and i think that comes out in the music so, yeah. definitely definitely just on the same kind of wavelength kind of like yeah if, if, yeah. One, if someone wants to change something it's not like well dude it's not like that ever it's like oh, okay well let's yeah yeah like, yeah, it makes perfect golf, sense. Man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, where does Ben get his boots? <laughs> so, my boots, my father-in-law bought bought them for me in a small village on the mountains in the south side of Mexico City called Ajusco. He took nice. me up there to get some boots. Are you, is it like how many boots, pairs of boots do you have? That's my only pair. Okay, so it's just one pair. Yeah, I'm trying to get some uh, neon green ones. Oh, live shit. Live performance. 
but they're hella expensive. So. Black light reactive boot. <laughs> Dude, you gotta go. Like, there's this one town in Mexico. My a lot of my buddies from Mexico are tell. I mean, they show me pictures and stuff. They have those boots that have like they're like, cowboy boots. Oh, oh I know. but they uh, have they they they, they 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 have like the toe that goes up to yeah. like the sheer shoulder, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. like curls well, around. Yeah, yeah. I never thought about that. I no, they literally things. like the big festival out there. I forget what the fucking dance. part of Mexico. Yeah, the dance. There's oh, a Michoacan. dance. Michoacan. Yeah, Michoacan. That's right. So they go out and they dance and like they have these boots and they, and like whoever's sicker has the longer ones, dude. Like yeah. it's like, like so there's dudes with just boots that are just fucking like eight feet long. They're just like fucking so dancing sick. and they're all, they're all curled and shit and they're just like dancing. Do and going, they have like, to hold them? No, no, dude. It's that, that's what pussies do. Pussies hold their boots, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, my boots are too long. <laughs> no, but it's like an actual fucking cultural thing out there. It's been happening forever. It's like a. Legit it's like the chicks that grow do. their fingernails super long. It's the same thing, but it's a dude version. <laughs> no, I think those are cokeheads. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I don't. The, there's girls that grow their ving- fingernails long. Oh yeah, dude. The, the the chick that had the longest fingernails in the world just cut them finally. They're called witches. They're like they're like fourteen <laughs> feet long or some shit like that. Jesus. Ugh. She had to like carry them like behind her. Imagine the smell. Yeah, oh, how am I gonna walk dude. around with those? Imagine how forever. thick. Imagine how thick they are at the base. Like after she cut them, like imagine how far her fingernails come off her fingers. So now. much doo doo. Oh man, dude. dude it, there's no way you it can gets wipe itchy down there. She could not wipe. I just realized she that. She has dude. a bidet, dude. A bidet for sure. It's a dude. bidet. A foot. Yeah. A foot. A foot powered bidet, dude. <laughs> God, man, it's disgusting. Either that or her husband did it for her. That's a good. That's a good man. But anyways, uh, next question. <laughs> he liked it, I'm sure. Oh, Wait. we're going. We're going to pictures. Hopefully Sorry. the boots. Hopefully the boots, not the fucking just... fingernails. <laughs> What's yeah, up? Okay, okay, yeah. This, this is the boots, dude. These that's... are the pointy boots. I, I Shut want the those. Fuck. Up, I swear dude. to God, this is like. I oh, want those boots. Where'd you get this picture? MySpace. Those are, those are <laughs> shitty ones. Go to go to that that fourth picture on the bottom with those actual guys that have like the professional made ones. What this? Yeah, that one. Those are like the legit ones. See yeah, like yeah, avant garde cowboys, dude. Okay, dude. it's 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 fucking following us now, guys. It's following us. It's, it's my fault. Cowboy, I said it too many times. I said it too many times in the beginning of the podcast, and now hey, it's fucking. You can gone to boots. You can manifest. Things. You can manifest things. That's now I now I back the now I back the movement, dude. I guarantee that'll be the name of an odious mortem demo song in the future. Avant garde oh cowboys. cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh. No, but it's, it's it's cool to see. Like you know, it's just a, they threw it when they first showed me those pictures. My buddies, I was like, shut the fuck up, dude. Like, dude I mean, like, like, I thought I thought I was being like cool. punked or something, and I was like, because they look so extreme. So if you you know, we've seen shoes the way we've seen shoes our whole life. And it's like it's like showing someone that's listening to Madonna only like, hey, here's Corpse Grinder, dude. Check it out. You know, it's like the same kind of like dichotomy. You're just like, fucking Jesus Christ. This is way too crazy. But uh, no, it's a fucking big thing, man. They, they take it very seriously out there. I will have a pair. <laughs> yeah. Fuck yeah. Eventually. Oh, yeah. Those are that. that's like if you're a boot guy, that's like some fucking that's like your that's like the of your collection, you know, nah, you have those. Nah. That'd be so funny on stage doing the dance too, because it's like I need a flip flop version, dude. I need. Oh, dude, version. there's no just way the that back end, work. the back end girls, <laughs> <laughs> like a mullet version, like a mullet fucking. <laughs> oh my god, I'm gonna I'm gonna custom make Anthony a pair, pointy I think, pointy flip flops, avant garde flops. Yeah. Oh, dude. <laughs> You know, avant-garde you know, swimsuit I'm, collection. You, know I'm fu- you guys are speaking my language right now. <laughs> All right, last question, and then we can just, you know. What bands would you hope to play with in the future? Akrakaka. Fuck yeah. Say it one more time. Akrakaka. No, oh, okay. I would say Akrakoke, because I just yeah. don't want to say it. You you want to make the E silent? I just see the word and I'm just it's an aggressive word and I'm like I'm not gonna try this I'm just gonna yeah. take the easy way out that's pretty much what Acre-cokey. I do. Oh, Anchor God. cock, I anchor that. cock, hell yeah, that'd be sick. Um, yeah, anchor cock, uh, cradle of filth, some yeah, of cool British bands. Yeah, that'd be sick. Oh yeah, and then if, like the dream tour, <clears throat> you know, financially or something, probably honestly like Slipknot. If like we got yeah did that, that'd be like. Oh, it's like a childhood. It's like childhood check. You're a check yeah. mark. Childhood. Like, yeah. I'm done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. 
They're totally. Sick. I feel like you guys could get like on the like just keep playing shows and keep playing like and inviting like other band people out there. I feel like one band like like Trevor from Black Dolly or something like this man's sick and just bring he'll bring you guys out. You know what I mean? It's like that's what's cool about. uh. Well, you guys have the hooks. If you actually sit and pay attention, the hooks are there. The hooks are there for the bigger shows. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's a hooks and the also it's got the underground stuff. It's got like all the no, I know, but I'm saying like for a crowd like the bigger that's the what I'm saying. It's like you crowd can... and shit like that. They're, oh, they sure. love yeah, the yeah. hooks, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, how could you get that crowd to well Ben's gonna get the hooks when he gets those boots because they're basically hooks. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking when you said hook, I was like, oh, I know, I know. I was like, I'm gonna take the bait. I'm taking the bait. I'm taking the bait. <laughs> And I'm no. not speaking about avant-garde cowboys, dude. But hoodie. we're we're a corporate band. We do play <laughs> events. Nice. Oh yeah, you oh, guys yeah. have played some weddings, right? Yep. Yeah, we We've got played one weddings. We played one. uh, we played business. Uh, yeah, business. The graphic design companies like party. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that's yeah. rad. Okay, so do you, when you do a wedding, do you learn non-metal songs? No, no we did a. Well, we did a wasp song by request. Oh, okay. That's, that's okay. Metal, so, if they asked, I mean, and the the pays right, sure, it'd be sick. Yeah, that's awesome, man. That's a uh, looking forward to the future for bands to try to make money, dude. You know, it's like play some events. You know, don't you don't have to play shows all the time? Play a fucking bar mitzvah. Stop being a pussy. One of yeah. the best concerts I've ever been to was a an event. And I got invited to work it, but it just was sit by the stage, make sure no one walks by. It was a Huey Lewis in the news, a pharmaceutical or pharmacist convention. <laughs> and they played like every hit because they probably got paid, you know, twenty, thirty thousand dollars, I bet. Oh and my god. I just gotta sit right on the side and I was like, this is so sick. <laughs> I would love to be like on acid at like a Huey Lewis in the news pharmaceutical <laughs> convention show. <laughs> That'd just be like, cool. Just be like, what the fuck? Like looking at the whole thing. <laughs> it was really weird, but it was awesome. New drug. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. They played that. Fucking awesome. But did they play a hip to be a square? No, they did. Yeah. Oh fuck yeah, they did. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm, they're song. definitely gonna get all the hits out, dude. I fly, I, I've seen them twice, and the first time was at a casino, and they played like mostly new songs and like weird doo wop stuff. And it, the music was really quiet, and I could hear all the uppies talking over it, and I was like really pissed off. But then this, that was like the redemption show. It was, it was really cool. That is something. Sound, uh, okay. Sorry, I was just going to say, I'm going to sound like an idiot right now, but was it uh, Back to the Future? Was oh, yeah. Was yeah. When well, I hear you, Lewis, I, th I just think of Back to the Future. Love, love. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm a big fan. Yeah. <laughs> oh, That's yeah. like literally the, the implantation that you have as a child is like. When you hear yeah. Huey Lewis again, you're like, "Oh, Back to the Future!" You know, your mm -hmm. brain goes back to the future. Like it's yeah. like, it's like or perfect American fucking product Psycho, placement, right? Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that Classic big model song that he had on it. Yeah. Oh, it is. Yeah. But he had yeah. that song "Back in Time" too. Back in time, you know. Yeah, that's probably yeah. the yeah. third one. Did he make them? That I think he made them both yeah. for Back to the Future one and two or something. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy how it paints like a whole movie for me just hearing like his voice. Like mm -hmm. it's like doesn't matter what he says. Yeah. I'm just like, oh back that's like it was like already like locked in as a kid. I was like, all right, that's back to the yep. future. Let's move on. <laughs> the whole while I was like, don't need a credit card to ride on this. Trip. It's like, what? You don't need a credit card? Like, what is that? Like that line always just. Stuck. But check it out, dude. Peter Cetera is Karate Kid and Three Men and a Baby on the same album, dude. It's uh, uh power. Wait, 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 no, I just said Power of Love with Huey and Lewis. Is it the same song? Power of Love for Karate Kid. Am I right? I think Karate Kid isn't that like you're the best around. Oh yeah, it's yeah. Karate Kid. I think. No, dude, Peter Cetera had uh, a song on the talking on about Back the to Karate the Kid. Back to the Future. No, no, no. I, I moved on for to Pet. Pe oh, uh, sorry. Fuck. Now I'm fucking up his name. <laughs> I'm Peter Cetera. My bad. Peter Cetera. He had uh, a song on Karate Kid. And in Three Men and a Baby, and they were both on the same album. I don't know. I, now it's <laughs> now it's fucking stupid. Now that I have nothing to, I have nothing the guy to add. From the Room, the movie The Room, Peter Sist Greg Sestera. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's kidding. seen The Room. I've I heard about The Room, but I've never actually seen it, dude. So is The good. Room like it's the one? 
that's known as like one of the worst movies of all time. Is that? But it's the worst best. That's it's, it's, like, it's like it's like it's like a troll two kind of thing. Uh, it's a movie. Know. Yeah. yeah they, they, there's they dude. There's very very like res- dudes that I highly respect that love that shit. So I'm like, it's pretty good. I I love awkward shitty like moments. That's like my favorite part of life. I I, I haven't. I can't like I'm not mentioning the room, but like like Troll Two, like how like it's supposed to be known as the worst movie, like quote unquote worst movie of all time. Like I love the fucking the way actors come in and just like say something all shady and walk out. Like I, it's like one of the best comedies of my life. It's like yeah. seeing like like watching actual fuck ups when they think that they think they're just nailing it. Like that's like I don't know. I just love that. <laughs> Shitty acting. Troll, Troll Two is good. The documentary uh, they made on it, and oh, that's really like a fest, and everyone's laughing at it. And then the director's like, "No one understands my movie," and he's like, he still <laughs> thinks it's like really serious as day. And I think that makes it better because like, yeah, well, it to be bad. <laughs> I know it's like a like a birds aren't real kind of thing. It's like no one like there's people that don't like don't get it, and they come in, they're like, "What the fuck? Like, what are we talking about, dude?" And we're just like, "Fuck yeah, dude!" Like people that come in the birds aren't real shit. I'm just like, "Ooh, I can't wait. This is a yeah. new." A new victim. We can, like, like he's old dude. I killed birds? a bird the other day, dude. <laughs> like, <laughs> birds aren't real, huh? I've I mean, not seen that? birds. That's a movie. So no, no, no. So it's a, it's a, it's a satire group that got oh. together. That's a one I dude. It, that I just, thought it was a movement. I mean, it kind of is. It is no, it's it, it's definitely a movement, dude. They Uh-oh. went to Twitter. They went to Twitter, um, about two months ago, and they went there and they they were fucking like thousands of people outside, like protesting twitter saying birds aren't real and that they have to change their logo and the ceo came out and, like got the joke the ceo came out and was just all like dude we're gonna change our logo fuck this we're done and then he fucking resigned right afterwards damn <laughs> like i know i'm like that's like they're I like fucking it. gangster and, and actually right now uh okay but l- so real quick i just want to know like their the, what's their pitch like give it to dude, me in, it's like, already just, sentences i don't i shouldn't even have to tell you I mean, I know that are birds real. Birds are, are birds real? Have you seen the them? Birds are definitely real, dude. Okay, okay. So, what's people picketing that they're not? I don't know. I, I know, but the, they they should have be they should be saying something like funny with it. Like it's all funny. Everyone's in character when they show up. It's all like a big joke. It's all like everyone's showing that's up. Too home. avant-garde for me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I it's, want them to so, have like so, fake. Facts, obviously, for Anthony though, too. Like, I want no, them to have, have fake, fake, facts. fake facts. They have fake facts. They said that every bird was killed in like 1978 by the government, like 3.2 billion birds. That's were... what I'm looking for. And they go on the news and shit and they like fucking like they buy billboards in LA saying birds aren't real and shit. And like they do like funny ass things. It's making fun of all the crazy conspiracy, like insane conspiracy. People. I wonder if there's like one dude who really started Googling it. Like those pigeons, dude, they do no. move kind of funny. <laughs> Well, my favorite part is the people that go in the comments are like, dude, what are you talking about, dude? They're fucking real, dude. But in the, and all the fucking people that are like in on the joke, just like murder him. They're like, what do you like? You're fucking you're a spy, dude. What's going on? Like, I don't know. They like all just like take him down. No, it's like a big joke. But anyways, it's super funny. It's got <laughs> multiple sex across the country. It's probably got a million followers. Well, birds aren't real, but I know that Zoss fucking real, dude. And OK, that was good. That was a good segment. Right now, dude. <laughs> I thought yeah, it would be awesome. Both, dudes. Uh, I'm having a great time right on guard. Now. Way to save the episode. The yeah, episode, dude. the whole episode is gonna be ruined on birds. Are real. No, I'm gonna talk no, about it more. No, I, 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 <laughs> I asked the question, he answered it, and I loved it, dude. Yeah, people are making weird shit now. <laughs> so, so what are you guys up to now? What's what's next for the band? You guys had a sick tour in fall 2021. It's been a couple months. What's going on now? Getting busy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, new album coming finishing up. new album. Yeah, yep. Oh, yeah, new how, designs, man. new merch. Same how uh, far are you through the album right now? We have like too much music in a way. Um, not a problem, kind of like narrow it down and see what we like. And uh, you know, as everyone knows, it's been a weird couple of years, so it was like kind of hard to want to get creative at times. Um, but and we've pushed through, made some good stuff. But doing the tour really like reinvigorated us, I'd say. And yeah, gave can us I some ask, power back. Yeah. Can I ask what the best uh, shows on that tour were? Santa Cruz, obviously number one, and then obviously Santa Cruz was up there. But <laughs> pretty much every show was really sick. Uh, yeah, Pomona was really good. Medford. Medford was fun. 
Albany. Um, yeah. I think probably the most people at any show is Albany, California. And we played with Succumb. That was like really surprising oh, how many people that were there. Uh, yeah, they were all good shows. Games. It didn't matter there if there was 10 people or, you know, over 100. It was like uh, it was everyone was stoked. Yeah, I really liked uh, the Cupertino shows. That was all ages. Yeah. And oh, that was probably the most like crowd interaction response we had the whole time oh, because, you know, yeah. they're young and like had energy. But people were like singing along and jumping on stage and making chimpanzee noises. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was sick. But it was cool. Like I've never like we've done tours before, but it was mostly relying on hope we play with this good band and they bring people and they like us. And we made fans, but this is the first time in this band or any band I've ever been in has gone on tour and people are showing up like in our shirts, knowing words, like being like, I'm so excited to see you. I'm like, oh, really? Cool. Yeah. I don't think anyone did. I'm trying to look up one of your uh, your speeches from one of the, this last tour. (laughs) (laughs) Just to show people, just to show people like how hard I was like, it's so like, your confidence in what you're saying i'm just like oh totally and then it just like takes a right <laughs> turn and i'm like and i'm like that's even funnier dude that's way better <laughs> like you just keep going and uh yeah I have, to, I have to find a good one but anyways i didn't well if you guys want to set up another tour at any point hit me up because i'm trying to book some stuff so same for if you guys want to come up north yeah we that'd usually, be awesome tyler's the man with uh booking that's his that's his uh, main squeeze there. Yeah. Um, I love Seattle, dude. Yeah, Seattle's yeah. dope. Yeah, how is uh Seattle? The uh, um <laughs> it's gone downhill. Hopefully oh, no. it turns around, but the crime is uh pretty bad. It's kinda like a lot of big cities, it's just like more expensive and more gentrified, but also getting more shittier and dangerous too. And it's like you want to fight for it to make it a better place, but like it does kind of wear you down. You know? And when I say I love Seattle, it's literally me popping into that place for one day and having yeah. a good time and then leaving. So it's like, <laughs> I shouldn't uh, really, I'd be like, Oh dude, I had a good time in Seattle. Mm-hmm. That's, that's what I, yeah. So many, no, it is, it's beautiful yeah. here. It it's is beautiful. really cool city. And I've gotten like a lot out of living here and you know, met, all my best all time friends and gotten a lot done. Um, but, but we, we, I feel the same way about San Francisco too, dude. Like, I don't like going into the city, it's not like chill. You Very, yeah, you're like right there too. Totally. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think most people, I mean, it's like San Francisco kind of like went to Seattle and Portland, like kind of spread out. It's like those, those are kind of like the same spot now. You know what I mean? Like, it's just kind of like a, you go there, like, I, as a kid, I went there for shows. It was like, shows like so much fun like you get you get there see the show get the fuck out of there and then like you go back home you know it's like for me that was like the allure of that and like you go there now and like all the like a lot of metal heads are gone and stuff because they all had to move because it's too expensive and then like it's just like you know just kind of like it's starting to like be a different place from just like this is this is like a mecca of metal like what the fuck's going on yeah and all uh all the uppies like we're in our town still but you know (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. (laughs) like i've lived here for two years like honestly like like, a lot of our friends just don't live in the city anymore ben and i are lucky we have like the coolest landlord like ever so yeah like if we didn't have this guy or they told the building like there's no way we would be in city limits anymore yeah mm. that's kind of, that's no kind of like me in uh santa cruz it's like yeah. so expensive here it's like one of the top most expensive places in the world uh, united states and uh if we didn't have friends like we wouldn't you know it's like mm-hmm. would the rent would be literally i don't know double probably what we pay now like mm-hmm. yeah and it's already a lot but like it already be like du- it'd be double people would pay that easily you know mm-hmm. it's like all about like the people you know in a city and that's pretty much like who keeps you there and then like when when things get like out of control, like I look at like prices for houses nowadays, I'm just like, oh, one bedroom for 1.2 million. Is that cool? Mm-hmm. Is that is that a good price? Is that good? Like it's like it starts to get like, all right, well, that's not even that's like, OK, 5,900 a month. All right. Can I do that for one bedroom? You know, it's like it starts to get to a point where it's like that's like not it's a, a thing you can do. Yeah, it's like it's like who can do that? It's like a super rich person come and buy it and then they can live there. But like as far as like getting a mortgage on like a two million dollar place it's like two million dollars it's like fucking almost 10 grand a month it's like insane it's, yeah it's ridiculous 
and like yeah. with all the remote work and stuff okay yep. yeah mentioned yeah i grew up in boise idaho and like it's like you could buy a house there for 108,000, 200. It's really nice. Then, like in the last year, all these people from California, remote oh, workers, yeah. are working there, and it went up like an insane amount. It's like scary, actually. No, I'm like scared to ever go through Boise with like California plates because I have a bunch of friends that have moved out there and they're just like, they fucking hate California. <laughs> like, because it's like, it's totally like up their economy and as far as like cost of living you know it's like, it's like more than here in a lot of areas in just geez. like less than a year jesus and it's like fucking five feet in snow and like people are like it's like more than fucking cal like you know or fucking so the tech boom brought a bunch of people to cali it it and like then kicked them out some shit and then a big old fucking like explosion of like little sp- spider fucking babies crawled out onto the united states and went yep. elsewhere is that what exactly you guys yeah like yep. a real estate in like montana and all these cool places where you're like okay at least i can go there like no you, you can't anymore. It's, <laughs> well it's at, least they have sushi now. <laughs> yeah? at least oh, at least they have sushi now finally so that's and, real like, and, and yeah. pilates yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm gonna move to alabama eventually whether my wife likes it or not <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it's the last place that's like not spiking right now, probably. Dude, <laughs> as far as, you know, dude, as far as like sick, cost bro. of living. There's, there, I mean, there's like there's cool spots and cool cities in every state. There's like, there's like you know, like when you I first learned this going to Texas, I mean, like oh, in like 2007 or six for the first time, and like like oh, this is Austin. It's kind of like here. It's kind of cool. You know, it's like not like when when I went there, I was like seeing a bunch of confederate flags and shit i'm from santa cruz i'm like jesus christ these guys are aggressive like what's going on here? you know and then you get to austin's like what's up dude we're back in santa cruz dude and shit's fucking the quarter of the price you know it's like i could see yeah. myself moving here then the whole fucking world caught on to that exactly and now that, that's that like austin went up now. the more than any other yeah. city i believe last year totally yeah i think more people moved to idaho though than any other state last year they moved out of or in into Oh yeah, yeah. People aren't leaving there. <laughs> I kind of want to up with a uh, with a uh, a video of one of uh, Tyler's uh, tirades on a live show. All right, just do it. Let's hear some banter, dude. <laughs> I'm just trying to banter, dude. Let's put him on the spot right now. I'm down. No, because that was one of the parts that made me fucking crack. It's like a cephalic carnage thing. It's like cephalic carnage is like. But we should have we should have picked out like his favorite banter yeah i'm just gonna put him on the spot though it might not even be good whatever shit was horrible thing happens all selfishly i got dumped in my bald head anyways but our virus was far cooler because it escaped from under the antarctic ice it has infected all your bodies you peed under every pore your brain is fucking bleeding and it you do strange things like eats your neighbor's pet have sex with it that's just like that's like oh, God, sexy dude. Ebola, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Death metal stand up. Yeah. I know it's great. I remember watching it, just be like, "Holy shit, this is like the funniest thing I've ever seen." On it stage. is. Like, the lyrics of that song are like really kind of scary. Uh, I think it's fun. Yeah. Just... Do you not know what least... you're gonna, like? What you're going into it. I know. I asked this in the beginning. Like, you know the song that's coming up next. Do you just go like you know the song title? You have like a couple like avenues you can go down, and you just fucking run with it. Yeah, like there are picks. Like I did a. Uh like sexy ebola came up like an earlier show and i like brought that back so there might be things i have at one point it all came up from on the spot i never like plan it out um, and all like if there's a piece i like i might bring it back another show but really i just try to uh, stream of conscious that's conscious. called yeah. writing on stage dude and that's what the comedians yeah. call writing on stage oh that's yeah fun. I never. No, that's I'm awesome. Gonna, I'm never gonna get to do that in like real life. So. <laughs> I know. I feel like if you don't think if you had a guitar in your hands, you could you could have that confidence to do like a open mic or something. <clears throat> I could do not like in that sense. I could maybe go down to Pike Place with my acoustic and start screaming that shit at people. And <laughs> maybe I blend in with all the other crazy people downtown. I just ignore you. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> 
<laughs> they just take the money out of your hat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, I love that, dude. Now it immediately hooked me. I was like, this band's got the, all the funny things. This is an entertainment thing. I'm here for entertainment. I got it, all of it. So anyway, yeah, yeah, I'm like, when I want to put on a put on a show and people like enjoy themselves and totally. laugh and have a good night and go home and be like, I really like that. And our songs, like the lyrics can't be like kind of uh, nihilistic and depressing, but I don't want them to come to our show and feel awful. <laughs> but, yeah. That's awesome, man. That's well, awesome. no, I mean, there's there's a pot, there's an uplifting aspect to a lot of parts of your music as well. That's yeah, the there are there are like it is a, a lot of darkness, but in not every single song, but some of them we do throw in like a yeah, message of hope. I guess you, could you guys fall into the category of what I call journey music. So if I'm on a long drive, your album will be played from front to back on that drive and it will be the soundtrack to that drive until it's done. Hell yeah. And, and, and uh, yeah, the, and it's because of those, those dips and valleys of um, the emotional whirlwind, you know, Mm -hmm. the darkness and the light, you know, and you guys do the, the duality of that blends. You actually blend it very well to where it from front to back, you're taken through a journey. Thank yeah, you. that's fair. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for no, taking you me guys. on the journey. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <No. laughs> but I like that. I think, yeah, there's uh there's legitimacy in darkness and light. And I've always liked, you know, fucked up horror movies and books and uh, thinking about dark things, but I'm not gonna like become the darkness. Maybe we're like you know adventuring in there with like we're like a flashlight or something. That's kind of how I look mm-hmm. at it. That's totally, nice. dude. Yeah. I mean, yeah, fuck nihilism. That's yeah. what it, we're, we're, <laughs> fuck we're striving to be too. We're just happy, chill mm-hmm. dudes that like to hang out with people and be cool and have a good time. But we do, you know, express the you know existential angst and mm-hmm. anger that we have too through our music. I mean, it's like a common like thing with all bands, like metal bands. Like you see Tyler on stage just now, like. This is Tyler chilling. This is Tyler as himself. Like he's, you know, on stage. He's like this. He takes over. He's like this, like, yeah. oh, you know, comes over and like and comes and he's actually just a chilled fucking mellow. But he's basically making you laugh, making you feel the vibe, actually feeling the part. And then, you know, like that's basically the way he, he gets, you know, most metal people get their shit out. Just like on stage, get it out and then be chill. Mm-hmm. You know? It's a th- it's a form of therapy, totally. Authenticity. Yeah, mm-hmm. that too. That I think I think that, point too. that that one thing I'll say about our group is that we're authentic and we're ourselves. And I think just because of that reason and our friendship, that's like the power mm-hmm. that, totally. we, that we have. That's a big that's a big part, you know, because or else it's just you know some dickhead and his you know guy he pays for or whatever in the band or it's not it's not an impact you know like i love how we 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 drop the bomb you know oh yeah and i think and i think that's the the secret ingredient totally Fuck yeah. dude oh yeah well f- dude i fucking i'm super stoked you guys decided to do this and i remember uh me and ben have been talking for a while back and forth and i'm glad you guys all came on and fucking Tyler, you're fucking awesome too, man. On stage, I was like blown away by your presence, and like I've said a million times, but uh, keep going, man. I don't know. Do you guys ever see yourself, like, I don't know, ever doing the metal blade thing, or is that just gonna be DIY the whole way? They'd have to pay us out fat, and then like, we a, keep, like it's more like you work for us, bitch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, of course, I would love to do that. Like, yeah, bigger tours and all that. I would, I would lo- absolutely love to. Yeah. How it's going to happen uh, remains to be seen. I guess. Yep. Well, fuck. I well, think. Uh, I think if we keep going, though, this will just become people we'll have never, to have never to stop notice. creating, dude. Never stop creating because you gain some fans just in this podcast right here, us alone, and all you, you know regular dudes that watch this shit every week if you have not listened to this band yet get the fuck on it right now where like, can people seriously. buy your shit is it the band camp is yep. it the band camp all our albums are free to download too or just pay what you want um 
Fuck yeah. It's on Spotify, Amazon, Apple, all that uh you know, you shift, kid stuff. You shipped uh I remember I, I scrolled back to when you released you guys said that you shipped like to like Kazakhstan and like all these other countries. We, like yeah, it was uh yeah pretty trippy. Like <laughs> That is pretty everything. wild to figure out like all the like little pockets of the world that you've reached, mm-hmm. you know, uh, just in general, us talking as artists that have put our music out, like to find out like there's a, a fan in the Congo and you're like, what the fuck in the Congo? Dude? <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. It, 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 yeah, no, it feels really good, dude. Just that that's like, the main thing for me and I, I know everybody wants to get paid and shit but i'm like also the distribution is that's i don't want to start that big conversation at the end of this again it's too big uh, i just like say. i just like people being exposed exposed mm-hmm. to the art that's the main thing first and then you come back if you really like it come back and buy a t-shirt <laughs> uh I'm sorry. I should have done this at the beginning, but I have a show to plug. I'm going to plug it right now, guys. Plug it. Go for plug. it. Plug me. So, Lost to Lucy, first show of the year, Hound Bar, Southgate, California, which is, you know, Los Angeles area. We're playing okay. with Inhuman Atrocities and a bunch of other bands who you can see below. Some of these are DJs and rappers, actually. It's like a mixed. Uh, genre show uh but yeah this is sick and then um it's it's there's flyers uh out there for a couple other shows in february so you can peek around and see what we're doing already if you want to check that out uh but we'll we'll announce it again but uh shout out to the ominous ruin guys basically i'm going to give it away we're doing more shows with ominous ruin so boom homies continuing okay. to homie together so yes yeah. yes firestone yep. boulevard yeah, that's Firestone Boulevard. I, it might just be a house. I was told. <laughs> L- L- L.A. house shows are dope, man. Exactly. So Dude, house uh, shows in general, man. Those old school house shows. I yeah. like. Yeah. Had some of the most fun, like playing just a house show rather than playing yeah. like a house of blues or something. And it's like, yeah, like just a fun, like the energy's there, and you get to just put your instrument down. It's not like a manager going, "Hurry up!" Like you got to fucking change over. You know, it's just like you're done and just go hang out nice. with people. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Hopefully we do that. So, oh yeah, but yeah, dudes, thank you guys for coming on, and I'm glad I made this all happen inadvertently somehow. I'm glad as out. well. Yeah, Me thank too. you. Nice this meeting everyone. Sick. We really yeah. appreciate it. It was fun. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Totally. Yeah, I'm gonna get, yeah, I'm gonna get sure. your guys's information. Oh, yeah. Totally. Fuck yeah. I like oh, yeah. you guys. We'll we'll be available yeah. for you, dude. Yeah. And uh, one more time on uh, the homies at Battle Forged Coffee. <laughs> What up? Go get Battlefield. Caffeine. Do they sell barrels of the coffee years? No, they don't. No barrels oh, okay. of coffee have ever oh. been sold from <laughs> Battle Forge Coffee. Oh. All right. Love you guys. And uh, yes, we'll be here next week as always. Thank you so much, Ben and Tyler, for hanging out with us tonight. And uh, everybody have a great weekend. Um, if you enjoyed the show, please fucking subscribe. If you haven't, tell your homies and spread the word. Cali Death Podcast will live on with you guys as our help. Love you guys. Rock on. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.